Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Kuro no Kisaki. It's me, your host, Logic Blade, and we are back. Sorry about the late start today. Things happened, made things a lot more difficult to get started on time. So, you know, that's life. That's how things go. Uh, but yeah, for those of you who are super excited to be here, we're uh, about ready to finally go to Tharbad, check out the film festival. We've been asked by one of the actresses to uh, investigate and stop whatever threat came for her because she got a blackmail letter. And it's like, oh yeah, uh, if you go to the if you go to the film festival, things will be bad for you. So we got to find out what's going on. What sort of plot is in store for us? Is Armada involved? Almost definitely, because they're always involved in this shit. Um, but uh, just how far will they go? And uh, how how deep will the body count be in this chapter because uh yeah we've had uh we had a company of Jaegers die in the first chapter second chapter we had uh, like 20 random civilians die so uh yeah i certainly hope it's not the uh, any of the cuties on the screen here um we haven't met either of them but i do like their designs uh, the brown haired girl especially i mean i guess they're both brown haired uh, from the way it looks but like the, the one in front that, that one's more my type anyway uh what I'm trying to get at is, uh, we're about ready to start. Uh, I've just been talking for a few minutes, waiting for, uh, Twitch ads to stop airing, doing all that bullshit, and, uh, getting people in and ready to go. Of course, if you want to avoid advertisements, you can always feel free to sub to me, and that will get Twitch ads to go away. Or you can use ad blockers. I don't care if you use ad blockers, and in fact, I encourage it, because it keeps you safe on the internet. Anyway, I, I don't have any uh, ad blocker uh, sponsorships though, so no plugs for me. Um, but yeah, if you do want to, if I am going to plug anybody, I'm plugging myself. Uh, go check me out. If you want to check out my fanfiction, check me out at AO3. Uh, if you want to send money my way, check out my Patreon, scroll down, check the tip item. But, you know, just, just stuff. Anyway, that's that's enough shameless self-promotion. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and get started, shall we? I did like the new title screen, I will say that. Definitely, definitely was a fan. Um, Alright. So we did everything we needed to for the night stuff. The only reason why I didn't go straight to uh, the inn here is because, uh, or not the inn, the fucking Spriggan office is, uh, I wanted to go to the shops to make sure all my stuff was prepared. I had my, I had my hit rates up to decent levels, check my quartz and my arts and all that stuff. I feel like I shouldn't run into too many issues for this chapter, but uh, you never know what kind of bullshit boss they throw at you. Alright, should I turn in for the night? I've got lots to do tomorrow to prepare, so it might be good to get some rest now. Quests and sub-events will become unavailable when you go to bed. Hmm? What's this? Won't you join me for a tea party in the riverside? <laughs> That's so like her. Always so indirect. I guess I was invited. Gasp, are we gonna are we gonna talk to Ren? Ah crap, I left my water bottle upstairs. I'm glad the rain finally stopped, and tomorrow should be much better weather-wise. Yeah, it should be sunny in the southeast, according to the forecast. So, you decide to take a night stroll? 
Even after telling Anyas to head home early? <laughs> I'm just on patrol, that's all. I need to keep tabs on the previous and current students, after all. <laughs> Seriously? It's been a while, little kitty. Or, should I say, Ren Bright? <laughs> it's been a while since I've been called that name. Ren Bright. It's nice to see you too, Mr. Spriggan. I've been studying abroad here since spring, so perhaps I should have said hi before this. Well, considering you're only my former client, this is probably fine. Especially since the last time you wandered into my office, you were pretty half-baked about the whole thing. Although, it does feel like quite the near miss, considering that case with the corrupt politician and his lazy-ass son. <laughs> well, I believe he's still remained active in the underworld, hasn't he? I've been able to keep tabs on him by talking to that reporter. That little incident forced me to become student council president, but at least it's been fairly interesting. <laughs> Is that so? Glad to hear it. It's been about five years since we last met. I believe uh, Meister Georg was the one who introduced us. Or no, it wasn't Georg, it was George. <laughs> Jorg. There's so many goddamn Georges in this game. <laughs> yeah. Yes, back when you helped me avoid the professor who was pursuing me. Uh, professor Novartis. I heard you also helped the old man move following the turmoil caused by the independence movement. Well, I owe that old man a bit of debt. After all, I did force those two kids with uh, extenuating circumstances onto him. Man, they're just throwing all the... It's like, hey, remember Swin Nadia from Hajimari? Yeah, uh, I, I led them there. Fucking man, man. <laughs> Though I never imagined I'd be paid back like this years later. <laughs> a turbocharger, right? It seems you've taken a liking to it. To tell you the truth, I was able to help my best friend a bit with the design. Uh, wait, really? You know, I was wondering how you were able to get all the latest tech to be included in the design. I heard you literally cried when it got destroyed by Walter. About as much as if one of your own relatives died, huh? C come on now. I gotta say, the society seems to be pretty worn out nowadays, don't you think? There's been so many dropouts in the past few years, yourself included. Not that I'm complaining. You're fine, but the fewer people I have to deal with like them, the better. I think that wish goes against human nature, don't you think? Birds of a feather will always flock together. I'm sure you'll have plenty more people like them to deal with in the near future. Hey now, I'm a completely normal law-abiding citizen here. Don't say things that are gonna scare me. You might complain, but there are a lot of people who have their eyes on you now, you know? For example, that extremely skilled and lovely, and also very scary young lady over there. <laughs> it's a bit embarrassing to be called young lady at my age. <laughs> Guess I've been had. Well, right on time. I appreciate you making time for us when you're so busy. Don't worry about it. I was actually already out on some other business. So, you're the person I've heard about from Rune, then. The woman known as the Flying Swallow. It's kind of immature for you to just hide there, you know? <laughs> Please, forgive me. It wasn't really hiding, she was just on the opposite side of the bridge. I'm the head of the CID Analysis Division, Kilika Roran. It's nice to meet you, Van Arkride, Chief of the Solutions Office. 
Although, I don't think this is the first time we've met, is it? <laughs> well, I've heard about you here and there. Not to mention the details of the case in the Underworld a couple of years ago. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, this setup was certainly worth it. It's been four years since we've last met. How have you been, Director Roran? And I hope you're doing well as well. Or, sorry, what? And you as well. We may be in different positions, but I have no reason to work against you. And I'm happy for this chance to meet face to face. With him as well. Ah, oh, I see. So this is the tea party I get invited to then. <laughs> I did consider inviting the Sylphid girl too, but... Sorry for the wait, Kilika. But wait a second. Look who it is. <laughs> you're late, Zin. We haven't gotten together for a meal in so long, and yet you're still so easygoing. Sorry, an urgent request came in. I finished it up as quickly as I could, for what it's worth. I certainly wasn't expecting to see you here, Arkride. <laughs> Long time no season. I've been in touch off and on with various requests, but we haven't met in person for about a year now, I think. Yeah, hasn't been since the wedding. But you've grown taller again, Ren. It makes me think of the time I put you to bed in the royal capital six years ago. <laughs> Did that really happen? Uh, I don't even know where to jump in here. <laughs> we all have our own connections here. Sorry, just when you thought you had it all figured out, I came barging in, huh? Now, now, you're far too old to be making a face like that. I'll treat you after this. So, even though you guys are in different positions, you two are still pretty close as fellow Taito students, yeah? If you got friends like this, it really makes me wonder why you need to contract work out to me so often. Well, that's that, and this is this. Not to mention, Fee showed up recently, so bear with me for just a while longer. You do seem to have some pretty unusual personal connections and encounters. Including with our pupil. <laughs> I was just about to bring that up, actually. You're like some kind of singularity, a bridge between the normal world and the underworld, not dyed by either color. That's right, if you want to find something quickly, there's no matter bad for the job. <laughs> Shut up! What am I, some kind of human test subject here? Let me just say that even though you're not on Zao or the Direwolf Swabble, I consider you to be, you, I consider all of you to be pretty damn troublesome. <laughs> Well, I guess I can't argue with that. Isn't it about time we got to go? I believe we have reservations. Right. Just one moment. This little tea party is ending after all. Let's leave it at that for today. <laughs> Sorry, Crimson. I wanted to do this earlier, but... You know, fucking people decide, Oh, I want to watch Big Brother until 1.30 in the fucking morning. So, you know. That's... That's just how shit goes. <laughs> And uh, I didn't want to, you know, have stupid screaming adults, you know, charging through my microphone. <sighs> well then, let's leave it at this today. Be careful in Tharbad. How the hell do you know everyone's schedule ahead of time anyway? <laughs> You'll stay for this scene, but then it's off to bed. I see. Although, it doesn't look like you're completely tied to the guild at the moment, either. <laughs> well, I do have a connection to them, but unlike my siblings, I'm not a bracer. Oh, she's talking in first person. Ren's quite content just cooperating and lending them my knowledge when they need it to protect something important to me. The people in Liberal, the people in Crossbell, and there are even some people in Calvard who have met that high standard recently. I see. Well then, Ren's off to bed for now. I can't violate the curfew too much after all. Please, take good care of my Anyas for the next four days as well. Yeah, leave her to me. But don't tell me. You still can't manage to stick to first person all the time, can you? 
<laughs> My apologies, I was caught off guard. <laughs> Being around someone who brings back so many old memories just kind of made that happen. I suppose I still have a ways to go as a lady. Well, I think that kind of thing is fine every once in a while. Oh shit, he, she got the head pats. It's all over. <laughs> Ren, you never had a chance. You fool. <laughs> It was five years ago, back when you were lost and stuck in a tailspin. I had just finished my training and was fumbling around in this job for the first time. Aww, it's such a cute scene. I was able to shelter you for a while, give you some advice, but I couldn't really do anything for you. Yep, time between third and zero, good times. But you forged your bonds with your own hands, and found things that are really important to you. You're not a little lost kitten anymore. You're a full-fledged lady at this point. <laughs> Aww. And how is a lady supposed to interpret this kind of treatment? Oh, oops. But I think saying you didn't do anything is being unfair to yourself. For Ren, for those old friends of yours I've heard so much about, for your helpers, and especially for my precious junior. Your hands are far better than you even know at directing us, lifting us up, and giving us a push when we need one. Aww. Well, that's... I'm sure you're aware of your own karma more than anyone. With that in mind, I'll happily accept that careless treatment anytime you want. And thus, Ren's first ship in Kaseki is born. She's grown up so much. <laughs> I'll take my leave here for now. Have a pleasant evening, Mr. Spriggan. Yeah, good night. <laughs> well, that was cute. Also, I don't know about Ren's first ship. I, I still feel like Ren Tita's still strong in my mind. <laughs> Not even close to what I heard even a year ago. Just how much have you changed? I I can see it. That that did feel like it had some very romantic undertones to it. <laughs> well, I guess it's some kind of fate. Let me watch over my assistant for you. <laughs> we know. Yeah, I know. It's it's rather unfortunate. But the Tita Agate ship is way stronger. <laughs> and people thought Van couldn't get a harem. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, dude, there's still another half a continent that Reen's dick has not even touched. It's fine. The harm curse only works in Erebonia, Farine. Everywhere else, you know, you gotta you gotta try harder elsewhere. <laughs> October 4th. On the second day of five consecutive holidays, Van contacted Dina to formally accept her request. In order to arrive early enough on the requested day, they'd have to leave the night before. The members of the Solution Office began preparing for a three-night, four-day trip. Well, that and Van's flipping attitude made 
be able to attract one. But we still see his charm still shines through. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, hell. If, if uh, Van wanted to be a dad like all the other uh, Trails protagonists are, all he'd have to do is uh, get with Paulette, and then boom, he's got a kid too in Yume. Easy. Although, really, the Spriggan's office really just feels like Van's kids. He's the dad who always stays with the kids, and... And Elaine is the mom who is, like, always busy with work, but stops in from time to time to check on them. <laughs> You're happy for Ren, even if this doesn't result in anything? Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. I think it's, it's nice for her. <laughs> Aw, you guys are so lucky. I want to go to the film festival, too. And I want to meet that pretty actress. <laughs> well, it's just work in the end. But I am a little bit nervous. I've never met a big movie star before. Right, and that Nina has a pretty mysterious aura about her. It takes about eight hours to get to Thank or to get to Tharbad by car, right? I was about to say Thancred. I was like, no, that's that's wrong. <laughs> it's such a long distance, so make sure you guys eat up first. Well, thank you very much. Well then, time for me to set the mood with just one cup of... Are you an idiot? Didn't you literally just finish getting your license reissued? Seriously, aren't you a little too fearless, Tenant? <laughs> well, I don't know what your request is all about, but please be extra careful. Yeah, no, Van's been doing some good stuff behind the scenes, and now we're just we're just getting to light to see just how much he's been helping out, and that's cool. <laughs> well, to be honest, I'm not completely sold on the idea, but once we get out of the city, I guess we can let you try driving. I know you're driving Red Star around Langport, so I want to see your skills behind the wheel. That'll be no problem. I'm sure it'll be basically the same idea to drive an Ingert. I mean, at the very least, it should be safer than the driving of an old man with shaky hands. Let me just say one thing, though. If you screw up and get a ticket, or get even one scratch on my baby, I'll tie you to the roof rack for the rest of the trip. I had a feeling there was something besides sweets that you were this annoying about, but... The other two things are cars and saunas. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's cool. I'm really glad we got to see uh, Ren interact with Van like that. I I didn't think their re re relation would be like that. <laughs> Have a good night, Crimson. Uh, see ya. See you later. <laughs> In any case, please do drive safely, Aaron. Hmm? I'm getting a call. This number is. Well, I guess it's from them. It's n I have no choice. Master Van, do you have a moment? Oh. Uh huh? Wait, what? He's getting a call from a chick? What a strange outfit. I apologize. Are you with the fellow members of your office? Yeah, don't worry about it though. Is this about the extra assessment? Sorry, I'm a little preoccupied at the moment. We'll be heading out of the city for a while. Can I give you a call when we get back? I see. It was sort of decided at the last minute. I probably should have let you know. Well, it's no problem for me. However, Van, all of the statuses from earlier were abnormal. And as I am assigned to provide service, I cannot simply ignore such a thing. Maido, Maido. As it is my area of focus, I am personally worried about it. <laughs> you missed having one since Sharon went off with Anton. Yeah. It'd be freaking hilarious if Sharon just showed up in, like, Kuro. Just like, oh yeah, surprise. Were you expecting me, Master Van? I don't even know who you are! <laughs> well, I appreciate the thought, at least. 
don't worry, I'll call you in a few days when we get back and things settle down. See you later. Wait a moment. <laughs> Have a good night, Crimson. Phew. Uh. Uh. Guys, what's with that look you're giving me? This wasn't some kind of shady request or anything. Oh uh, ho ho! I wonder about that. Seems like you are having an intimate chat with your favorite companion from your favorite shop. What the hell? No! I don't know what you mean by companion, but she was very pretty. Also, her outfit was really pretty looking too. That was a maid uniform, right? But she said something about performing service, and that she was personally worried as the one responsible. Alright, just, just drop it and let's go! <laughs> Uh, poor Van. Expert misunderstandings. Actually, Van probably would know of Sharon by reputation. Ah, if it isn't the severing chain, Sharon Kruger. I've heard about you. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't Van, aka Paul Shitass. No, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, you do seem pretty used to this, Aaron. Well, I don't feel any shaking, and it feels pretty comfortable. I don't think it's any worse than Van, honestly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Huh, you're not doing a bad job, kid. Yeah, but your car is just like you said. The quality of the ride's good. The car itself's expandable. It's got good power. It's great around corners. I'm a Red Star fan myself, but this Ingrid isn't bad at all. I'm glad you understand. Among the four main car makers, and I'll probably be borrowing this more often, especially when I need to pick up some chicks. No way in hell. Well, I'll leave the driving to you for now. If we keep on going through the night and just take breaks and alternate, we shouldn't make it to Tharbad by morning. Although I am kind of worried about Nina Fenley's request. Yes, it does seem like something else is going on based on the reaction of the Genesis. I do feel bad that, like last time, I have no idea what that something might be. That's nothing you have to apologize for, Anyez. But it's really strange. What kind of mechanism is at play when it shines like that? Yeah, the mechanism itself isn't the same as an artifact that can't be analyzed at all. I've never seen anything like that before when we were in Langport. But it does seem to be following the same pattern. I mean, Armada's probably involved. Uh, I've got no idea. I've tried asking my contacts for more info, but so far none of them have been spotted yet. Maybe they're the ones responsible for blackmailing all the members of the office. That letter's from Nina's office, right? Or that's from Nina's manager. I don't know, blackmail feels like a thing that's too cheap for Armada to do. That's right, and I can't think of anything they would get out of interfering with the film festival for. Whereas Messeldom, the place where the other festival was cancelled, seems to be their home base. Nah, they've probably already long since moved out of there. The targeting of that film festival was a case of terrorism for ethnic reasons. But of course they decided to take the threat seriously and cancel it just to be safe. Ethnic terrorism? It's just a bunch of bullshit. It's picking up more steam recently, though. By the way, Van, you and Dingo really seem to trust each other, don't you? After all, he connected you to Nina pretty much right away. He's been helping me out ever since I started out the Solutions Office back in the day. He's been providing me with odd jobs for a while. And sometimes he gets good info from the black market. Yeah, and that guy's friends with Jack, as I recall. But you also have Bermotti. You got a lot of friends like that, don't you? Yeah, those are the ones on the more respectable side. But they're also the ones who don't try to get overly involved, who just buckle down and do their work. 
and he's one that I can trust more than anyone in that group. He seems to know a lot of people. I mean, he even knows someone like Nina. I heard that he's going to be coordinating Spriggan requests for us in Tharbad, too. Yeah, he's half Middle Eastern, so he's bound to have some strong connections down there. Oh yeah, he's also famous for being the only person who's ever turned down a Fullet Surprise. Wh what He did? Isn't the Fullet Surprise the highest honor for any journalist? Wait, why in the world is a guy like that writing for a stinky gossip rag? Well, he's got a lot of his own takes on the matter. He's also doing some interviews at the film festival, and he's probably going to be showing up at the second day of it. So we can trade intel when he comes down too. Sorry about that. Hey, if you're sleepy, just take a nap. It's no problem. You can recline if you want, but make sure you stay buckled in. Even though we clearly can't see seat belts there, we'll just pretend that they have lap belts on. <laughs> Don't push yourself either, Van. We've passed quite a few service areas so far. Don't worry about it. I'm used to long drives like this. And if it comes down to it, I can always make the kid here drive. Oh, it's no problem. I'm still young, so I could do the whole thing if I wanted. Ah, oh, oh, that reminds me. Is it true you usually can't drink camel milk in the Republic? Oh, yeah. Nina mentioned that they used it to make that chocolate, Melfita. Of course, camels themselves don't usually live outside of the Middle East. Wait, are you telling me you drink it normally in your hometown? Oh, no. The camels live at the foot of the mountains, so we didn't have any. But I was able to try it a few times during our expeditions. It tastes a bit richer than cow's milk or sheep's milk. It's really delicious. Oh, it almost sounds like Kume's. Sounds like it could be pretty good. <laughs> well, hearing that makes me want to give it a try. I've heard that camels don't actually give that much milk, though. I think that's part of why it's so valuable. I've never tried it m myself, though I hear that apparently people with milk allergies can drink it as well. It's supposed to be high in protein, low in fat, and packed with more nutrients than normal milk. And though it's pretty difficult to process, if you do it well, you can even use it for making chocolates. What the hell, dude? Were you spending all night in the library researching this or something? You know Zhao lured you to Langport with sweets. I was wondering, what if the enemy had sweets? That's... actually kind of terrifying. Then we'll just have to make even more de delicious desserts not to lose. No, seriously, you guys don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, Van. But really, Nina seems like a very nice girl, even when she's not acting. She's a couple years older than I am, but she really sounds like she has it all together. That's right. Even when she was surrounded by monsters, she felt so resolute. She might not be a fighter herself, but she gives off a sort of vitality. Yeah, I think she's something special. It almost seems at odd with her eastern lineage. She's originally from Langport, right? Or, she's not from Langport originally, right? Dude, it's not like every Easterner is from Langport. There's a city called Long Lai in the east, and Crossbell at west has its own eastern quarter as well. Although, it seems like she's intentionally hiding her eastern side. But, I guess that's her decision to make, not mine. Hmm? What exactly do you mean by that? Um... Well, it's sort of a unique issue in the Republic. A hundred years ago, following the Democratic Revolution, discrimination based on race, status, and culture was forbidden. The Republican Constitution was set up to allow people of all backgrounds and races to coexist with one another. At least, that's how it is on the surface. Oh, 
but then things like that terrorist threat happened. Yeah, some issues are pretty deep-rooted. It's not as big a deal in Langport, but Calvart is full of it. And by it, I mean feelings of racial superiority from the days of the Old Kingdom towards people from the eastern and middle eastern parts of the continent. Crossbell independence turmoil caused things to hit their peak on the issue, but I think it's starting to subside now. After all, the entire Republic has been benefiting from the reparation monies being paid by the Empire. But it's not like that issue just went away, though. I... I see. Even still, there are cases where Heiwei has to respond in kind. In times like that, we really need to work together. Oh? I wasn't expecting to hear those words coming from your mouth. Shut up, dude. I'm just saying, I don't see much point in labeling people, that's all. I agree. In the end, it just makes people feel like outsiders. Although, the issue is that there's no shortage of people in the world who don't agree with that mindset. Huh. Well, a lot of Easterners control a lot of wealth in Calvard, so it's easy for people to get apprehensive about them. On the other hand, the people from the Middle East have been contributing to Calvard's technology and science since forever. Middle Eastern scholars have been a pretty massive influence over institutions like the Verne Company and the Basel Institute of Science. That includes one of my great-grandfather Epstein's disciples, Latoya Hamilton. It is famously known that she is from the Middle East. Oh, even I've heard that name before. But I bet there are people who aren't comfortable with that too. I've still got a lot to learn, don't I? Fairy? Hmm. Look, you guys shouldn't be too worried about issues like that when you're young. Don't let stubborn old men sway you. Try to communicate openly with both sides, and make a better tomorrow for yourselves. I'll be watching over you from my rocking chair, sipping tea as an old man. Van? Van, you're still plenty young yourself, you know. Come on, don't give up hope, dude. Let's just throw ourselves at the paths we've chosen and keep running ahead. You a demon or something? And stop calling me old man! <laughs> their sleeping faces really give away their ages. Were we ever like that? Aww. Well, things were just so busy back then. Plus we had our own individual struggles. You all need to push through in your own way. So you don't lose your way. Like I did. Aww. <laughs> Thar Bad City. I'm so excited to see this place. October 5th. <sighs> oh, you awake? Oh, Van? Did you say something yesterday? Oh, the Seren Desert. I remember reading about it in a textbook. Mm. <laughs> Not bad, huh? We just hit the desert. We should be there in an hour. I'm getting pretty tired. Helper 3, you want to take over? He fell asleep so easily. What is he, a kid or something? Well, getting rest is important, 
and falling asleep so quickly has to be a kind of talent. Thanks for your hard work driving, Van. There are a lot of cars here, though. Yep, they're probably all headed to the film festival. Well, while he's asleep, let's see what this baby can do. Oh, come on, please drive safely. According to the map, we're about an hour away. Oh, I see it! Wow. Looks even bigger than I thought. Yes. It's a city full of tradition and innovation, overlooking Lake Oasis. That's a dumb name for a lake, just call it an oasis if it's an oasis. That's Tharbad. October 5th, 802. Wow, there's a waterfall in the middle of the city. Wow, what a surprise. I wonder if it's flowing in from Lake Oasis. Looks like there's plenty of sightseers here. So where do we park? Oh, there's a big parking lot on the right over there. Let's head there first. Gotcha. Ah, oh, we finally made it. You only got an hour of sleep. Are you sure you'll be fine? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm used to this. Man, it's this hot already and it's only morning? Definitely has to be the desert. It'll be even hotter at noon, but then at night it gets quite cold. Well, our client was expecting us at noon. Should we hit up the casinos until then? No, we won't. Let's go check in at the hotel. After we drop off our luggage, we can do some morning warm-ups. I believe our reservation is at an inn in the traditional district, right? Yeah, and from there? We just need to head that way. Alright, let's get going. Uh, I say that, but I need to go grab my water bottle, so I'll be right back.
Alright, I'm back. Thank you for your patience. Normally I normally have my water bottle and my uh, my soda with me, but I'm actually out of soda and uh, my water bottle is uh, upstairs because I, I just put it in the washing machine. So yeah. Let us uh, let us continue on with the uh, story stuff. Gotta say though, I like the city. Oh, that big one's the one then? Yes, that's the hotel our meeting is in later this afternoon. It's even more impressive up close. Well, let's just go around it for now. Woo, it's really bustling here. This is definitely more my speed. This is the Tharbad Bazaar. I remember seeing traditional dancers here last time I came here. Wow, I'd definitely love to see that. Ah, that looks like a type of tobacco over there. Yes, I've read about that before. It's called Shisa. It's a traditional form of entertainment in the eastern part of the continent. Well, I'm not into tobacco myself, but I'm definitely interested in finding some nice alcohol. We can save the sightseeing for later. The inn we're looking for is just up ahead. Oh, that's... Hey, Sara, let's go! Right, right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, come on, that's that's not confusing at all. There can't be two Sarahs. I'm... <laughs> it, it, it is uh, pronounced and spelt differently, at the very least. But still, I can't, I can't handle that. Wow, it's fairy. Long time no see. Long time no see, ma'am. Oh, do you know this person, fairy? That's right. This is the inn I stayed at with the Jaeger Corps. I was a bit surprised, too. <laughs> well, this must be a faded meeting. Welcome to Tharbad, everyone. Your rooms are on the second floor. Allow me to take you there right away. If you would. Honestly, this looks like a pretty nice inn. I I like the uh, the blue brick. It's very uh, has a very nice feel to it. Oh, so you're studying in Edith now? You've grown so much in a year, though. It took me by surprise. <laughs> I've still got a long way to go, though. There's still plenty I don't know, and I'm always relying on Anya's for help. Oh, but she's a very quick learner. So I get a lot out of teaching her. That's right. I'm excited to see just how much she'll grow in the future. And you're her employer, right? You'd better be taking good care of her. <laughs> Did she just punch him in the chest? <clears throat> she really seems to look out for you, huh? Yeah, she's been like that since I met her. Well, the rooms are pretty nice, and I'm looking forward to dinner, too. Now that we got this all cleared up, shall we get started? Yeah, Dingo City was providing some spring requests for us to focus on. Let's take care of them and head to the hotel in the uh, entertainment district at noon. Understood. Let's start today's activities. We just need to find the bulletin board first, right? It should be right next to the bazaar. Alright, so just hand in the two quests from the...
Uh, yeah, the CID quest we did deal with the monster, and the uh, lost property request we did during the night events. Um, let's see what they have for sale here. A new sit-down meal. Right now, that's uh, that's a recipe. That's new though. I have nothing to exchange. Yeah. So acquire a recipe book. Um, not that I need to do this, but. I want to get those gourmet points. Alright. Doesn't look like there's any NPCs they want me to talk to first, so let's just go. Let's go check out the Spriggan request board. Looks like some Spriggan requests are available. Thieving girl in the bazaar. A girl has been pickpocketing strangers in the bazaar, and I can't let it slide anymore. I don't want to involve the police or the bracers. Would you please lend me your strength to stop her? I can give you more details in person. Fajir. Girl in the bazaar has been added to the do list. Wow, there really was a Spriggan request here. Yeah, Dingo spreads news fast. Oh well, yeah, but unlike Langport, Hayway isn't there. Bracer Guild should be able to play a more active role, no? Without that kind of limitation, I'm surprised there's even a demand for people like us. The Guild Branch Headquarters is stationed in that direction. There should be some Bracers permanently stationed here, although... Well, no matter where you go, there are some things you can't rely on Bracers for. And with the Film Festival coming up, I'm pretty sure they're short-staffed anyway. Eh, sounds like there's a lot going on. Well, we've got our request. We should take care of it while we can. Uh, can I take care of it right now? Because if I can, then I will. This looks like the guy? We're with the Arkwright Solutions office. Are you the manager here? Wow, you responded to my request so quickly. I'm Fajir, the manager of the traditional district's bazaar. Is it all right if we cut to the chase and I explain the rest of the request to you? Sure, go right ahead. As I wrote in the request, the problem is this girl who's been stealing from the bazaar. I let it go in the past, but it's been coming difficult as of late. I could leave it to the bracers or the police, but I'd rather end this without making a big fuss. That's why I'd like you guys to catch her, so I could please talk with her. Oh, you want a chance to talk with her, huh? In that case, the bracers might be your best bet for this kind of request. I understand what you're trying to say, but I really do want to help her out. Since she's a habitual offender, I can't consult the bracers about this. Given the situation, I thought consulting with you guys in the Underworld would be the correct choice. Huh, even though you're the manager of the bazaar, you're acting like this thieves' ally? Why are you willing to go so far for her? <laughs> Truth be told, the story's a little embarrassing. When I was young, I didn't have any money, so I made my ends meet by stealing. But I managed to get lucky and find a job, but who knows what would have happened if I didn't. She's dealing with the same things I was, so I want to give her a chance. A chance, huh? I understand the details now. It makes sense that you asked us to do this. So we're gonna take on this request now? Yeah. Should we do it right now? Yeah! Alright then, let's go ahead and make a plan. We'll contact you depending on how it goes. Yes, I'll leave it to you then. I'm going to go back to work. I'll come to wherever you are when you contact me. Alright then, we need information first. We should go talk to people around the bazaar. 
we should also have a quick word with the guild as well. Based on what the manager said, I think the Bracers know what's going on to some extent. Definitely. They probably have some information regarding this case. Then why don't we check out the church, too? I don't know how things work in Tharbad, but the church usually takes care of orphans. It probably knows something and the kids got no parents. Right. In that case, let's ask the people of the bazaar, the guild, and the church. We'll likely be asking a lot of people for information, so let's take our time. Yes, let's do our best. The even girl in the bazaar has started. Alright, so we'll start with this guy. You're talking about that girl, huh? She's never come to my place before. That being said, I've heard plenty of rumors about her. The manager wants to make sure she's not charged for her crimes, right? Honestly, I think that's rather naive of him. Hey, I agree with you there. If she doesn't face the consequences of her actions, she'll never be able to grow up. Then again, I'm not the most mature person in Samaria. Maybe it's not my place to be saying that. Well, in any case, thanks for your help. Oh, you're talking about that young girl who's been stealing, right? I've heard rumors about her, but she's never come to my shop. A bracer came by to ask me the same thing before, but I wonder what that was about. <laughs> a bracer came by? Yes, it was a while back. They were asking about any losses incurred by her stealing. Personally, I can't stand to watch a young child struggle like that. I really want someone to help her out, bracer or not. I see. Thank you so much. So the bracers are investigating this. Sounds like we'll definitely need to check in with the guild later. Now let's see what we got. Ooh, gifts. Why do you have two shops? Oh, she's uh, also a curio owner. Oop, I got stuck. Oh, okay, so the active voice there was, hmm? The stuff they're selling looks a lot different from in the capital. Yeah, if you go around, you get an idea of the place you're in. And Fairy is like, I see, I'll make sure to learn a lot then. Maybe I should have done the, uh... Nah, it's fine. It's just because a lot of the, uh... The stuff is, like, actually talking to these people. So, uh... Let's, let's talk with this guy. Ah, oh, I know that kid well. She steals stuff from my store rather frequently. Last time was about two days ago. Just two days ago? Her clothes were dirty and she seemed desperate. It's obvious she's having trouble getting by. That's why I felt the need to help her out. I make food for her to steal on purpose. That's pretty thoughtful of you. Don't you think she should be caught, though? It'd be great if she stopped stealing entirely. Other thieves might think of me as an easy target if this continues on. But I'd feel bad if I just let her starve. I want to help her out as much as I can. That's why I agree with the manager's idea. I'll trust you guys to help her out. Yes, we'll do what we can. Oh, that girl, right? She's stolen from my store often, so I know her quite well. How many times has she stolen from here? And how much does she usually take? She pops by once every two days or so. And she's only stealing a little, she's just a child, so she can't carry that much. So she's working alone, then? Yes, I've never seen her conspire with anyone else. She's just a child. How long is she going to live like this? I hope the police or the church can take care of her soon. Thanks for all your help. So 
that's our in. I think the Bracer Guild's over to the left here. Yes. No, this is the church. <laughs> Kids got some moves. Show me your moves. Oh, you must be those Spriggans with those Spriggan requests. Eat shit and die. No thank you. I don't know what the actual lines are here. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't square with the this one. Um, oh, there is... This is actually translated. Sorry, my bad. You're the man responsible for those Spriggan requests, correct? I believe I've heard people calling you fixers. Yep, sounds like news travels here fast. Indeed, headquarters has told me a fair bit about you, so I understand how you operate, at least. Of course, I've heard all about your work at Langport, but you seem even more talented than I had imagined. Oh, you can tell that at a glance? Knowing... Uh, Knowing how things are in Tharbad right now, hearing you compliment me like that makes me feel like you've got work lined up. I'm taking work from the guild pretty regularly now, but know that I still pick and choose my jobs, alright? Yes, you can still choose whichever jobs you like, no worries there. As long as you understand where I'm coming from, that makes things easier. And from what I've heard, you're more than able to help take some of the burden off us with your work. For the record, we're not just focusing on security for the film festival and tourist troubles at the moment. Hmm, so the guild's got a feeling something else is going on here. In that case, maybe I can get them in my debt. I'll be able to pick up some good intel from them. Alright, let's, uh... Go back to our side quests. Switch tabs again. Yes, we're looking into that case as well. One of our bracers saw her from behind at one point. But since then, she hasn't showed herself during our patrols. Hmm, so she's pretty cautious. We might have a hard time catching her. So, what plan did the killed come up with after that? We plan to make our full effort to catch her. However, we were told by the bazaar manager and other shopkeepers to let it go. The Bracer Guild has been putting it on hold for the time being. Yeah, the old man told us something like that as well. If you guys can solve this problem, then by all means, please take care of the rest for us. Alright, we'll take care of it in our own way. Alright, we've got one more place to check out. And that place is the Chorch. Talk to the father here. Father Mukhtar. The young girl stealing from the bazaar. I've heard rumors about that. It's our duty to take care of her since she's committing crimes and has nowhere to go. I've even sent someone to look for her at the bazaar. What happened after that? She was seen once, but not a trace after that. We haven't been able to speak to her at all. I apologize for not being more helpful. She seems to be rather clever. Thank you for telling us what you know. Hmm. Well, that's all the places we needed to check out. Let's go back to the bazaar and piece together all the information we got. Alright, I think that's about all we can get. Based on the information we have, this girl seems to be living alone. She doesn't have any friends or family and seems to be completely self-sufficient. On top of that, she has quite a knack for stealing things. She's managed to hide herself from both the bracers and the church staff. So catching her won't be easy, but I might be able to. Well, she might be capable, but she's still just a child. All right, I think we should try a stakeout. She's not on the lookout for us, so she might let her guard down and show up. Really, dude? How do we even know she's gonna show up today? We were told that she shows up two days ago. I think it's worth giving it a try today. 
Yeah, if we're staking out, let's do it at the food stall, since we have evidence that she's been seen there before. Let's talk to the guy in charge of the stall first. So, talk to this guy again, Jarrett. Is something the matter? We want to talk to you about that thief again. We'll explain the situation to you and that other stall owner, so can you come with us for a bit? Sure, not a problem. Van and the others split up and talked to the two stall owners. They told the owners about their plan to conduct a stakeout. With that in mind, we thought our best plan was to conduct a stakeout. Can we ask the two of you to cooperate with us? Yes, of course, I'd be glad to help you. I'd love for you to catch her. The bazaar manager asked for your help, so I'll cooperate with you. Thank you guys so much. Alright, it's decided. Let's split up for now. Añez and Farida will stake out together. And our little newcomer can tag along with me. Let's see what you got, Chief. Let's do our best, Fairy. Yeah. Is that the girl? She's being very careful. Definitely giving off a thief-like vibe. I can't believe someone as young as her has to resort to stealing to make her ends meet. Ah, she's coming this way. This is perfect. Let's grab her as soon as she steals something. Alright, that's everything I need. I've really been in a bind since this film festival has attracted so many people. It's already hot enough as it is, and this crowd's only making it worse. <laughs> well, for my part, I'm just glad to be getting more customers. Hmm. The young girl stole an apple and put it in her bag. Oh, as the rumor said, you've got quite a talent for stealing. Uh, huh? They call us Spriggans. Just saying, we have no intention of handing you over to the police. I just want to talk to you. Sorry, but you'll need to come with us. The young girl slips through Van's defenses with a quick feint. Whoa! <laughs> what a shame. Are you alright, Van? It looks like she's heading up towards the inn. <laughs> I'll clean up your mess, old man. Let's go, you lot. The street's pretty crowded. Where did she go? She's planning to hide herself in the crowd. No worries. I won't fall for such a cheap trick. Right there! Huh, uh, what? Damn, she's fast! We've got a problem. She's running on the sunshades. Ugh, this might take a while. Leave the high places to me. I'll catch her. As a Kurga warrior, I won't lose when it comes to agility. Please give up already. We just want to talk to you. We won't do anything bad to you. Ugh. Whoa, you shouldn't treat food like that. Sorry guys, I messed up. She totally slipped by me. You probably should have ignored the apple there. It was a stolen apple! I thought it'd be better not to let it get roughed up. You're pretty thoughtful, Fairy. I, for one, thought that was the right choice. She ran off towards the Entertainment District, but this might be a good opportunity for us. The Entertainment District's an open area, so it's hard to wander off there. Next time, we'll surround her and catch her. Got it! There she is. <sighs> I don't see her, but it looked like she ran off into this parking lot. She stopped running, so this is a good chance for us. Let's split up and block off any escape routes. We'll catch her this time for sure. Alright, leave the exit to me. I won't let her escape this time. I'll stand guard around the exit too. Alright, Anyas, that means you and I are searching the parking lot. We don't know when she'll jump out, so be careful. 
Yes, we're gonna catch her this time for sure. There she is. I'll go from the right. You get the other side. Got it. We finally found you. <gasps> you probably gotta be tired from all this running, aren't you? Let's just stop this, shall we? Stealing from other people is wrong, but there are people who are worried about you. Can't we just talk this out? You think I can trust you? Whoa there. You've caused a lot of trouble for us. We're not gonna let you run away this time. Everything's going to be fine, so just come with us. <laughs> How did it come to this? After finally capturing the girl, Van and the others contacted Fajir. They borrowed a room at the inn so they could talk to her. Alright then. Can you start by telling us your name? You've already been caught. You might as well give up an answer. My name is Shinam. I'm sorry, f I'm sorry for stealing stuff from the bazaar. However, I don't plan to make amends. If my only other option is to starve to death, I'll steal as much as I can. It's as we thought. You had no choice. Alright, let me ask you a few more questions. What happened to your family? How have you been living up until now? I used to live in the countryside with my mama. No, that doesn't work at all. I lived in the countryside with my mother. We came here to earn money since we were poor. But since my mom died from illness, I've been all alone. After that, I worked occasionally and looked for different places to sleep. In that case, I think the church would be willing to help you out. If you want, it's not too late to start over. Yes, I'm thinking the same thing. You're joking, right? I haven't just stolen things. I've done plenty of worse things, too, like taking jobs to smuggle items into the city. I don't deserve to be saved. <laughs> You're pretty honest about the weirdest things, kid. Well, we're done here. Whatever. You can just take me to the cops. No. We will not be handing you over to the police. That's why I asked this fixer to take on this request for me. Huh? I'm stuck in a bind, though. I had intended to put you in the care of the church. Would you mind giving me your opinion on this, fixer? Sure thing. From what he said, the safest choice probably would be to hand her over to the church. Or perhaps, there's someone who could better hold the reins and guide her. Who should we leave her with? Suggest the church take care of her, which is the law choice, or suggest the manager take care of her, which is the gray choice. I gotta be honest here, I feel like the manager should be the one taking care of her. He's the one who had interest in uh, worrying about her, and I think if she was being taken care of by him, she could apologize to the people at the bazaar properly for what she's done. Well, I mean, I guess she could do that with the church as well, but, uh... I gotta say, I think it just makes more sense for, uh, Square. I'm gonna pick the gray option this time. She might have trouble getting closer to the other kids, so why don't you try and take care of her instead? Hmm. Honestly, I was thinking the same thing. I have a lease for an empty room for traveling merchants to use, so she shouldn't have to worry about finding a place to live. Alright. Maybe this is fate after all. For the time being, why don't I become your guardian? And I'll have you work in the bazaar in return. Uh, uh, what exactly are you planning? I stole from the bazaar, didn't I? You're just reveling in the idea that you're a good person because you helped some poor kid like me. If you're going to look down on me like that, I'd rather live all by myself. <laughs> if you must know, I was in the same situation as you when I was young. A merchant took me in and looked after me. He taught me all about his job during that time, and I eventually became the manager of this bazaar. 
I figured this would just be a way to repay that debt I owed him. I understand that you might find this a bit hypocritical, but I think the suggestion is right. Hmm. I'm sure everyone in the bazaar would welcome you in open arms if you told them about your situation. It might take some courage on your end, but how about you take on the challenge to turn over a new leaf? Look, if you don't want to end up in the custody of the police, you have to be honest with yourself. Think of it like this. If you're not satisfied with your current life, then there's no reason to refuse. <sighs> well, if you put it that way, I really can't refuse. I got it. I'll work at the bazaar. Let me put it another way. I want you to let me work there. I, I guess. <laughs> of course. I'm looking forward to working with you, Shinum. Well, that's case closed, I guess. <laughs> you really worked us to the bone with this one. Well, you really helped me out of a tough situation. Thank you so much. I have to get approval from everyone in the bazaar, and there's other work to get done, too. Guess I'll have to keep at it. Yeah, please do your best. I will, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thieving Girl Quest complete. 3500 Mira Ghetto. Yeah, that's, that's how I felt, too. I think the merchants would understand, and they'd understand even more if the manager was vouching for her. So... I think that was that was probably the best case scenario, as opposed to just handing over to the church and like, you know what, let the church handle it. They'll be fine. Check it out. These guys got the moves. <laughs> Alright, I need to go find where I'm what I'm doing next. Alright, now I actually get to talk to all the shop owners normally. Because apparently the NPC lines are translated for them. How how bizarre that the bizarre NPCs are translated. Uh, 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 I, I'm sorry. Welcome, welcome. Can I interest you in some traditional Middle Eastern shisas? They have a wonderful fragrance and will really cool you down. They're just the thing for a hot desert city like Thawbad. They've really grown in popularity lately. In fact, we're seeing a number of portable Orville shisas cropping up. Though frankly, those things are nothing but tacky. My traditional shisas are the way to go, I assure you. <laughs> I certainly hope that the tourists are able to enjoy the atmosphere here. I do have a few orbal shisas at my shop, but I try not to sell them too hard. But you should get my orbal shisas, because they are the best. Apparently this bracer. Talk to you. You guys must be the fixers, right? I've heard all about your work in Edith and Langport. Alvis doesn't seem to like you guys, but I'm not sure why he's always so mad at you. Oh, you're a friend of Alvis? Guess you do seem around the same age. <laughs> yeah. That that's always a good thing when they're not like making obstructive background noise. Yeah, he's about a year older than me. But we've known each other since we were both junior bracers. I actually did hit C rank before he did. And I was hoping to become a B rank before him, but... Word on the street is that he's getting pretty close. I'm gonna have to work my ass off to beat him there. Well, looks like you're pretty serious about your rivalry. I know the feeling. Having a rival help me get better as a performer, too. I mean, I wouldn't go so far as to say that we're rivals. But either way, I've been traveling around and training a lot recently. So I'm going to use this opportunity to make as much progress as I can. Regardless, as a bracer, I can't overlook how tough this current situation is. Well, you seem pretty passionate about the whole deal, kid. And you seem like less of a pain in the ass than your green-haired friend. So hopefully we can work together without issue. <laughs> I've heard from headquarters that a B-Rank's come to lend us a hand. It's certainly reassuring to have her, but I can't let myself rely too much on her. Either way, I should do what I can to try and reach her level myself. B's already a B rank. We've got confirmation on what her rank is. Good job, V. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna talk to Ishmael here. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that this city's the bridge between El Siam and the Republic. 
The royal family often makes some pretty generous investments, but they have the high expectations for the return. It's an honor to get to protect the city, both as a bracer and a practitioner of their court swordsmanship. Their court swordsmanship? It's pretty famous all throughout the Middle East. You use sham shears, right? So you must be a pretty big deal over the Principality, yeah? I assume you were born over there, but you seem pretty at home here. That's right. I used to work over the capital, Ludos, but I got a request to transfer over to the Republic. I was quite sad leaving the Principality, but like I said, it is an honor to serve here. Being able to work here allows me to help both nations, so it feels like a blessing from Lucia. I've lived here for about five years now, so I think it's fair to call it my second home. It's truly fulfilling to be able to help both nations and help strengthen the bond between them. Things have been getting pretty troublesome in recent years, so I have to make sure to fulfill my duty as a bracer. Alright, so I've already talked to the receptionist. Oh. My god. Fuck. Okay, so literally, the uh, spreadsheet's like, Hey, you should try doing the optional side quest now, now that you've talked to everyone. It's like, ah, oh, fuck you. Alright, Central Plaza time. Is there more than one red? No. Wow, what a view! This is the place that really makes you feel like you're in Tharbad. Yeah, the scenery is one of a kind. And that over there is the Six Star Hotel in question. The Al Jamira Hotel? It looked big from a distance, but from here it looks massive. I mean, there's the Nine Dragons Hotel in Langport. This looks like another level of luxury entirely. I got a look down from the observation lounge the last time I was here, and I remember being blown away by how luxurious it was. It also looks really great at night. It's quite different from that of Langport. Oh? Well, now that you mention it, that does sound interesting. Sounds like it'd be something worth seeing. Alright kids, don't forget we're here for work. Oh, is this what you were talking about earlier, Fairy? I think the dancers are different people, but it was very similar. What? Wow. This is even more impressive than the last time. It really draws you in. That was amazing! How wonderful! It felt like I was in a dream. It's like those girls completely sucked us into their own little world. Middle Eastern dancing, huh? Pretty easy to get entranced by it when pretty girls are doing it. Wow, that was wonderful! Huh? Uh, um... Wow, that's a lot, mister. Are you sure? Oh, it's totally fine. We were completely enchanted. Hey, why don't you two come along with us? We know some nice spots in the entertainment district. But, wait, wait, what are you saying? Pardon us, but we're in the middle of a performance here. Oh, was that not enough mirror then? I get it, I get it. Just, just come along. We'll make it worth your while. Ow! Leave me alone! Uh, Shahina! Hey! What the hell are you guys doing? Knock it off already! Get your filthy paws off of her! Uh. Hey now, 
Can you believe what that local just said to me? Now, why don't all of you take a hike? Cut it out! Are the two of you okay? Um, yes. What the heck is going on here? What the hell are these kids doing here? Come on, get rid of them already! What? You Jaeger dropout or something? Sounds like you're pretty shitty to be hired by trash like this. Wh what? So, what do you want to do? I bet you got a pretty nice room, yeah? Film festival's in three days. How about y'all take a nice, long nap there until then? What are you doing? B bracers now? Shit. We specifically came to the poor part of town to avoid this kind of shit. You guys are gonna get it the next time we meet. Yeah, it's probably not gonna go the way you'd expect. Wow, that was really cool. Such elegant moves, I'm very impressed. <laughs> well, thank you, Naughty Vinod. I'm, uh, I'm having a blast doing it. And, uh, thanks for stopping in for the very first time. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make us stand out so much. No, it's alright. It all ended up okay in the end. Seriously, though, are you guys unharmed? Yes. You really saved us. Hmm. Seems like everyone's alright now. Indeed. He is just as Zin said he'd be. After that, the remaining spectators gave the girls a few more tips before dispersing. And the bracers returned to their patrol. <laughs> Hope you're having a lovely time. I'm I'm enjoying Corona Kaseki. Such a good game. Alright, this is on me. Are you sure? Even though we're the ones who got saved? Nah, you guys put on a pretty good show. This is payment for that. <laughs> I know what you mean. Sara's dancing is incredible. Shahina, please. Well, all that matters is that you're safe. We apologize for butting in so forcefully. Um... Oh, it seems we haven't introduced ourselves. My name is Sara. My sister and I are dancers. I'm Shahina. It's nice to meet ya. So, who are you supposed to be anyway, old man? You guys don't look like bracers. Oh. Shahina, that was really rude. Huh? What was? <laughs> Someone else called you an old man this time. It's not a laughing matter. <sighs> Whatever. We're not bracers, we're... A solutions office? I never knew there was that kind of place in the Republic. Maybe he's the one those rumors started cropping up yesterday were about. Oh, that sounds so cool! It totally suits you! You don't have to try to not make me feel bad. The damage is already done. <laughs> but that was just way too good before. And don't worry, making this idiot mad is pretty much an everyday thing at this point. No, but it's important for us to have good manners. After all, we're constantly in the public eye. Plus, with the trouble over the past few days, the number of people here has also been increasing. And by that, you must mean... This is caused by the film festival, then. I mean, even from looking at all the cars in the parking lots, 
There's tons of people here, both domestic tourists and even those from abroad. Yeah, and I'd bet there's a fair number of investors and rising businesses too. There really is a lot going on here. I understand that much now. Huh? Sorry, just talking to myself. By the way, your movements before were really impressive. Fairy, you move so naturally. And Aaron, you're super elegant. Maybe you guys should learn how to dance during your stay here. I could teach Fairy, and Sara can teach Anyez. Sh Shahina, wait a second. I admit that learning traditional dance does seem like it'd be super interesting. It really was quite pretty. Does that style have a name? Well, we've actually been a family of dancers for generations. This particular style came from my mother. It's no problem for us to teach it to others, in the sense of preserving a tradition. And since you came all the way here, we could show you some of the basic moves at least. Oh, I love that! But we need to finish up with work first. <laughs> well, if you're offering, then I'll be glad to come along. Though I don't know if I can keep up. Uh, I think I could apply this kind of dancing to my sword dances. Seems like it'd be worth it for me, too. Oh, you do sword dancing? Then this kind of outfit might look really good on you. Hmm. Yeah, that much is a given. Wait, I don't think I could pull off an outfit like that. Oh, I'm so excited! Oh boy, at this rate you guys are, are going to forget that we even came here for work. Nice to see you, Mr. Arkride. It seems like you've already arrived safely in Tharbad, then. Yep, we got on this morning without incident. I'm sure you must be tired after such a long trip. It's a bit early, but we just entered the area by airship. Oh, so you want to discuss the request right now? Should we head over to you right now? Oh, there's no rush. Just come any time by noon. I still have to drop off my luggage after all. Hey Nina, do you know where the key to my costume case is? Huh? Of course I don't. Excuse me. Well then, we'll be waiting for you at the hotel. Yeah, see you then. Was that Nina? Yep, yeah, she's here, so we can head to the Aljamira Hotel whenever. But that voice in the background... Wait, by Nina, are you talking about THE Nina Fenley? Don't tell me you guys know her! Um... Please excuse me, my sister is a huge cinephile. Sometimes we even go see movies on the Entertainment District big screen since they show them for free. Is there any big mech fights in this game? Uh, no. The the big gimmick fights come up at the end of chapters, but basically they're more Super Sentai fights than anything. <laughs> Ever since it was decided that the film festival would be here, she's been so excited. Of course I have! So many famous actresses are going to be here, not just Nina! Wait, so you're going to actually meet her after this? Yes. You wouldn't like... Would you like us to get an autograph for you? <gasps> really? I'd say we can do that much at least. Oh my gosh, you're the best! I promise I won't ever call you an old man again. <laughs> you don't have to bring it up again. <laughs> Just give up already. Well, if the chance arises, we would really appreciate it, and you've already been such a big help. Well, we'll be here for the next two to three days. If something happens, just give us a call. I can give you our special rate. Thank you very much. Afterwards, the two sisters returned to their performances as the rest of the crew headed to the entertainment district. Uh, I'm gonna save. I haven't saved today.
All right, onward. What do you got for sale? Looks like a shawarma. I bet he's selling tacos. This is the entertainment district. It's been open for about 10 years now. It's super busy, as you'd expect. Do I know Japanese? No, I do not. This is, uh, actually... I'm using the spreadsheet, so I've got all the lines translated in front of me. So I'm just, uh, just reading them off as I go. <laughs> yes, it certainly didn't feel like this at all the last time I was here. Yeah, well, of course they have a lot of domestic visitors, but it seems like plenty are coming in from the Middle East as well. I heard they're putting on a parade, too. It seems like it's going to be even more exciting than Messeldom. Oh, I can't wait to see it! Yeah, I don't hate the festival bustle, either. Alright, so, casino time? No, I keep telling you we're not going to the casino. We don't have, the, we don't have any time for that. Why don't we head to the hotel first? We can go walk around and shop after that. You guys are such buzzkills. <laughs> I was in awe how good you were translating. You got scammed. Yep. Get scammed. No. Not really. I mean. <laughs> Let's see what we got for sale here. Weapons. Ooh. Damn it, I don't have the money for all this. Um, an exclusive one isn't even, like, great for him, though. It's such a drop in defense and stuff. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, I guess... I will get this one for Aaron. really don't have enough money to go around getting everyone's weapons, so... I'll just catch Aaron up and everyone else can kind of... kind of wait. As I try to get more money. I guess they want me to go check the red ones first. So that's what I'm gonna do. I can see all the way to the station square. It really puts in perspective how expensive this place is. The big hotel Vegas films, it really doesn't feel like we're in the middle of the desert. There's a Spriggan request available. Unjust hush money. I am legally allowed to do some gray business in the city, but recently I received a letter that my business would have to shut down unless I pay a fee. I would like to consult with you about this matter directly. If you have time, please find me in the food stalls in the entertainment district. Marcello. Unjust hush money added to the added to the to-do list. Looks like a Spriggan request came here too. Let's take a look around the district and complete it as we can. Oh, I see. You're scouting out spots to go for nightlife. I feel you. Actually, no, as a matter of fact. Oh my god, that guy's so freaking hot! Wow, you're right! Should we go talk to him? W wait a second. Excuse me, you're so cool looking. 
Are you an actor looking to get hired by any chance? Were you in any movies? Can I get an autograph? Uh, well, as it turns out, I am an actor, but I'm not in any movies. And again, you ladies have a sharp eye. <gasps> oh, he praised me! Hey, you want to go out with us for some tea? I know a good place. Um... Sorry, but he's actually with me and we're right in the middle of work. Oh, this old man isn't too bad looking either. Not exactly my type, though. Hey, do you think he's your type of guy? Well, yeah, he's not bad, but uh, that's not the issue here. I'm only 24. Anyway, if you people are looking, if you're looking for people to go play with you, go look somewhere else. Yeah, that's the sad truth. We run into each other while I'm free. Let's go hang out. Aw, no way. Sorry for bothering you like that. You went way too far. This is why I told you to stop day drinking. I'm not even drunk, I promise. Yeah, yeah, let's get going. Wait a second, you dropped something. Oh, thanks, sweetie. You know, I've seen those all over since we got to Tharbad. What are they? It doesn't look like a normal cigarette. This is called an Orbal Shisa. Shisa? Like the ones in the stores? They're super popular nowadays. They're compact, so you can just enjoy them on the go. You want to give it a try, sweetie? Just kidding. Um... We'll pass. Both of us are minors. Hey, are you trying to force that crap on children now? I'm so, so sorry. Let's just get going already. Those two seemed awfully tense. Sounds like they were drinking, too. And in the middle of the day. Honestly, I'm kind of jealous. Well, given that it's right before the film festival, people are going nuts. Though, if something does seem a bit fishy. Alright, so we can't do this optional side quest just yet. Um, where's, where's Sweaty Man? On the go, Shisa, let's go. Hey man, sometimes you just gotta vape and go. Alright, seriously, where is the person I'm looking for? I'm looking for a sweaty boy in front of the station. The fuck does that even mean? Ah, this guy. This is sweaty boy. Man, it's hot out here. It's already October. How is this even possible? Seriously, next time I'm doing business with any Middle Eastern company, I'm hoping it's winter. I guess there's some sort of festival going on, though. Everyone else seems really excited. <laughs> I don't know why that guy in particular's line was translated, but that was cool. Have I played all the previous Trails games? Yes, I have. Uh, that is also including Hajimari no Kisaki, which I have a playthrough available on my YouTube page. You want to check that out? But yeah, I, I played all the games, so I'm uh, I'm not lost to anything. Other than you know, sometimes I I miss shit, but it doesn't happen that often. <laughs> so this is the Al Jamira Hotel. It's breathtaking. Yes, last time I was here, I only went up to the observation deck. Well, this is all where all the celebrities and rich people stay. I'd love to stay here at least once. Uh, I would say my best Trails game is probably Reverie. Uh, Cold Steel 3, Zero, and Azure are pretty high up there. Um, Trails SC is pretty good too. I would, I would say my lowest one is probably... Yeah, my lowest one is definitely Trails in the Sky the Third. Not that it's a bad game, I just don't think it's as good as all the other ones. I think I should tell you that in some cases the cost for one night would be more than a month's rent for the entire office. Heh. <laughs> yeah, no kidding there. I is that so? <laughs> it's like stepping into a different world. Oh, so you finally made it. Damn, this guy's chuffy. You're from the Arkwright Solutions office, yes? We've been expecting you. A very warm welcome to the Al Jamira Hotel. Oh, yes. So was the other person that called us who I think it is? 
thank you for greeting us right away. Don't worry about it for now. Van and the team were led upstairs to the guest room floor. Everyone, thank you so much for coming. I'm sure it was a long journey here. Well, I don't mind a long car ride from time to time. It's nice to see you again too, Nina. I heard you came by airship. Yes, I actually just arrived. I believe this is the first time you and I are meeting, correct? It's nice to meet you. My name is Agnes Claudel, and I'm one of the office's assistants. Riding the Sea Breeze is one of my favorite movies, so I'm very honored to meet you. Oh, that was my debut work. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Ah, oh, right, that movie. It was a bit plain in concept, but the camera work was really well done. Your set presence was also stellar. You watched that film too, Mr. Arkride? I had no idea you watched romance films, Van. Hey, I'll watch anything. Within reason. Romance movies? How adult! Wow, sweets aside, here's another thing you'd never expect looking at his ugly mug. What does my face have to do with anything? Nina, I'm coming in. It's pretty noisy in there. Are they here already? What in the world are you even talking about in- Huh? <laughs> that was a delayed reaction. Oh, Judith. Perfect timing. No way. Well, if it isn't Judith Ranster. Um... You guys? Name's Van Arkride. I'm from the Arkride Solutions office. So, you must be our co-client this time. I'm happy to work with you. <laughs> she's reacting like that because we met her before while she was out stealing shit. Because she's also the Phantom Thief Grimcats. That was delicious. This is all so wonderful. I guess at a top-class hotel, the cooking's bound to be pretty outstanding. I don't really know what all of it was, but I do know it was really tasty. This glowing, rich aftertaste and sweetness. I never expected camel milk to be so good. Then you've got the hint of raw cocoa. It only sounds like they serve it at this specific hotel. Who would have thought this kind of oasis would be waiting for us in the middle of the desert? It's a true Shangri-La! This bit's starting to get annoying. <laughs> You'll get used to it soon enough. <laughs> we really enjoy this. So I'm very glad that you do too. But Judith, you've gotten awfully quiet all of a sudden. Is something wrong? You've hardly touched your food either. You're not sick, are you? Huh? Uh, no, not at all. I'm totally fine. Well, if you've finished your meals, can we get to the topic at hand? You must be the solutions office. No, the fixers that Nina mentioned, correct? It seems like you already know my name, but... I wonder if there was actual merit in putting forward our own pocket money in this matter. Hmm? Judith, there's no need to tease them now, is there? Listen, Nina, I don't doubt your intuition, but we also can't forget our position. Dingo Brad was his name, right? It sounds like we can trust that reporter. But in the worst case scenario, things like this could lead to scandals. Well, but... <laughs> I suppose the top of the line actress would have to worry about things like that, yeah. It's not a simple matter to become indebted to someone with one foot in the underworld. That said, it does sound like there were some circumstances that prevented you from going to the guild with this. Ugh. Well, I figured as much. Right. Huh? Well, I'm not intending to get involved in a scandal or anything shady. 
That said, given the small industry that we're in, it wouldn't be that surprising if someone we know is causing all of this mischief. And if that were the case, it'd be even harder to ensure that the police or the guild kept it a secret. That's true. Unless we're dealing with a serious crime, reaching a settlement is usually easier. Oh, that's right. You're pretty smart, little lady. Well, alright, I understand the reason behind it, but why are you still deliberating over it now? You seem strangely used to brushing things under the rug, so I gotta say this seems a little fishy to me. He's pretty sharp, I'll give him that. I never heard anything about the girls coming along for this. You wouldn't know this, but the last time we met was in a pretty dangerous pla- Wait. Oh, really, Judith? I didn't know you met Mr. Arkride before. Um, could it have been when she was on stage in the cinema? Hmm. Yes, I just happened to see him during one of the stage greetings after a screening of Golden Blood. Anyway, I've heard you know your way around a fight, but... How are you when it comes to finding a culprit or discovering the background of a case? Um... I'm not really sure how we're supposed to answer that. We got a chance to go around the city just a tiny bit before you guys got here. And we've caught wind of something interesting already. Uh, <laughs> You've caught wind of something already? So, what do you guys think? Didn't you pick up on something strange going on from what we heard this morning? You're really putting us on the spot, huh, old man? Well, let me think. Well, the city's more crowded than the last time I was here. Hmm. If I had to pick something that was strange, it would be... The options are the number of tourists, the state of the desert, or the people's general rowdiness. Uh, considering we almost had a kidnapping in broad daylight, we've got day drinking and, uh, vaping in the middle of the street, I would say the people's rowdiness is probably the correct choice. You're talking about how rowdy everyone is, right? Of course, there is a film festival starting soon, but there seem to be even more people acting without restraint than you'd expect. Acting without restraint? What do you mean by that? And really, we keep talking about the festival, but it hasn't even started yet, right? Yet even still, people in the streets are messing around if it was like late at night in Langport. And it's only just past noon. Like the people who were ha harassing those dancer sisters this morning. Somehow it felt like everyone was very easy to rile up. Like there was some kind of force running through them. Ishmelga, no! What are you doing in Calvard? Yes, though it's difficult to say exactly what it was. But it does seem like there's a chance it could be connected to your request. I see. Hmm. This is only the beginning, too. At least in the sense of the smell I've been noticing around the city. There's no way you'd be able to go to the guild with concerns like that, though, right? Well, what do you say, Judith? Oh, fine. I guess I can't argue with my partner after you did so much work scouting out the location. Let me just say that I'm not expecting much from you, but I'll go along with Nina's request for now. Prove me wrong and get some kind of result here. But you girls really ought to be careful. I know you're comfortable on the battlefield. There are places in the entertainment district that are no good for your safety or your education. I don't give a shit about you boys, though. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> for our education? <laughs> we'll try to be careful. <laughs> Look at how much fun you're all having in here. Hello, hello, Judith! And Nina, too! You both look like you're doing well. <laughs> um... Who are you? Director? Why exactly are you barging in here out of nowhere? I heard you two just arrived, so I couldn't stop myself from seeing you. And now I'm here for all of you. There's no need to hold back anymore. Oh? And who exactly are you guys? You look pretty young, but I bet I could polish you all until you shine. So what do you say? 
Would you like to join my foxy parade? Uh, oh, what? Parade? Who in the world is this greasy old fart? Oh, you would be amazing on screen. Honestly, we lack men like you. Or we could slap some flowers and makeup on you and turn you into a real woman. What do you say? Uh, here he goes again. Well, I'm sort of used to this crap, so I can take it honestly. But I see, so you're... Ah, you're director Salvatore Gotch, I take it. Oh, he's the director of Golden Blood. I also heard that he's involved in the overall production of the Tharbat Film Festival. <laughs> well, of course you'd know me if you came here for the festival. Yeah, Golden Blood was a real treat to watch. The riveting developments that don't betray the audience's expectations, combined with the unbridled cinematography. Meanwhile, the audience follows the main character building their way up to reach that state by the finale. I believe the theme was meant to be liberation from oppression, a hymn for life, wouldn't you say? Uh, uh, oh. I don't know who you are, young one, but you have a keen eye. You're absolutely right. The key was to liberate humanity from their restraints and unleash their sexual desire through the main character, Zoe. Stop, stop! Director, you probably shouldn't say anymore. <laughs> well, if you understand things like that, then surely you see the value of my foxy parade. I can't tell you the details right now. But I'm collecting actresses and models and dancers from all over, just like Judith. And together, we'll make the start of the film festival a colorful, flashy, gaudy success. Well, we do have a few men involved, but they're pretty much accessories. So that's the kind of parade he's talking about? It actually sounds kind of fun. Yeah, fun in a lot of ways, if you ask me. Oh, I get it. You're looking for an innovative theme that goes beyond Golden Blood. <laughs> That's exactly right! I never thought see someone would see right through me like that. What's your name, young one? I'm Van Arkrad. I'm a handyman of sorts at the Capitol. Here, let me give me my card. <laughs> Man, Van is just getting along with this guy so easily, I'm honestly shocked. <laughs> wow, they're really getting into it. They are, though I was hoping that President Gaspar could hold the reins of this director a bit more firmly. If only I could manage that, things would be so much easier. So, who exactly are you folks? You said you are some kind of handyman. And I guess that's preferable to members of the press. Oh, you don't need to worry yourself with this. Yes, we're hoping to keep this matter private. Oh, mm, very well then. Judith, Nina, I apologize to do this so soon after you've arrived, but could you two please come with me for a moment? There's someone I'd like to introduce you to. Introduce? Could it be... I don't wish to make them wait. Please go up to the lounge on the top floor. I'll be taking my leave here. Director Gotch, you're with me. Gaspar, wait a second! I'm not done talking here! I'm still negotiating to get them to show up in the parade! Director Gotch, we don't have much time. Or do you mean to make him wait? Uh, hey, wait! You guys, I'll call you later, I promise! Wow, he came and left like a storm. So that was Director Gotch and the president of Vegas Films, Gaspar. It does seem like he puts up with a lot. I guess people in the entertainment district are all nutcases after all. Perhaps that's why they're able to create such powerful works. Of course, there are people who work here who do have common sense, though. Yeah, I'd say it's about one in three of us. He did ask us to come, so we should probably get going soon. We'll leave the decision of how to act while while you lot while you're here. However, tonight and tomorrow night, please come to deliver a direct report. Right. You can move freely besides that, of course. 
You can even enjoy the film festival as well. Yeah, we'll do just that. Just pray we're able to deliver a report after we uncover the truth. Right. Until then... Oh, Anyas, I almost forgot. What is it? Oh, um, would you two be able to do a little favor for us, please? Received 2 SP for getting the question right. <laughs> Shahina's gonna be so happy. For sure. Let's go give it to her when we have the time. It's 1 p.m. and the crowds are really starting to flock in. Let's spend the afternoon poking around the entertainment district. <clears throat> I'm sure there's more left for us to uncover. Man, those actresses were real hot though, weren't they? Plus, you loaded up on sweets, so your passion level's at the max now, right? That too. But I also realize that I can put all of you to use here. So I think this time we'll turn into some great on-the-job training. Once again, try to understand the perspective and style of what it means to be a fixer in your own way. Right! Ora! Such an arrogant prick. Whatever, sounds good to me. Alright then. Seriously though, this hotel is absurd looking. Alright, I'm gonna go save again, actually. Yeah. Looks like there's some new friends out here. Or rather, some old friends. Oh, it's you. What the hell are you doing here, Spriggan? You know these people, Nate? We're just here on some business. We don't spend all of our time in the capital, you know. If anything, well, I'm wondering what you're doing here. You drag some girl along with you to the film festival? Wow, the capital police must be so overworked right now. <laughs> I'm off duty today. I can spend my free time as I please, can't I? I just want to enjoy the festival with my girlfriend. You lot had better not make any messes while I'm here. You'll be sorry if you've ruined my hard-earned date. Well, if you're off duty, you can just look the other way and pretend you didn't see us doing anything, yeah? I finally managed to go on a trip with my girlfriend. I won't forgive anyone who ruins this for me. I thought Nate and I might be a bit too early in our relationship to travel together, but the film festival seemed like such a good opportunity that I couldn't turn it down. Well, either way, I hope we can have some fun. Alright then. Let's go ahead and, uh... Check out our request board. Actually, no, we just got uh, we got two side quests, so let's uh, let's go ahead and do our side quests. Uh, there we go. Wrong tab. That's the one I want. Go to the street merchant with a green exclamation point over his head. Okay, this looks like Marcello. Hey, you guys wouldn't happen to be... The Arkwright Solutions office? Yeah, that's us. You're the one who posted the request. Marcello, right? Yeah, that was me. I'm really glad you guys are here. As I understand, Mr. Marcello, you're concerned about receiving hush money demands for your controversial business. And this controversy has something to do with the stuff you're selling here? I think I've seen this brand in stores before. But the logo here doesn't look quite right. Looks pretty similar to a shop in Langport. You're making knockoffs of the real thing, right? More or less. My shop specializes in goods that imitate the appeal of other brand products. Don't try and sugarcoat things. This is completely illegal, isn't it? What? Dude, look here, I'm not a scam artist, alright? At the time of sale, I tell buyers that they're buying an imitation. They know exactly what they're getting. Really? People buy these even if they know they're fakes? That's right. I provide them a cheaper price, and they have nearly the same feel, so the demand has been steady. Hmm, I guess I never thought of it like that. 
but does the company of the official brand know that you're doing any of this? I imagine if they were to find out, they'd take legal action against you. Well, yeah. Falsely labeling my items with official product branding is out of the question. That's completely illegal. I think in my case, selling imitations with my altered logo is a bit more safe. Look, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure both those things are illegal. Any company isn't going to want you profiting off of their popularity. Ah, oh, come on, don't say it like that. So you've been trying to strike a careful balance between establishing your imitation good stall here, and now someone's gone word and wants to extort you to keep quiet. The question is, who exactly is threatening you? Yeah, this is a difficult situation for me. I was threatened by a policeman. What, by the cops? I find that hard to believe, honestly. If the police decide to crack down on me, they clear my shop out, and in the worst case scenario, I could be arrested. He told me if I didn't want that, I'd have to pay him to keep quiet. It was a police officer, a man. I own 30,000 mirror by tomorrow. If I were to get caught and charged as a criminal... If I was caught fairly and charged as a criminal, I'd be willing to pay my dues. But to get extorted over this thing is just absurd, don't you agree? I don't know if I'd go that far, but it's clear that we're dealing with a dirty cop here. If you guys can find the cop, I want you to stop him from trying to take my money. For a business like mine, it should be obvious that I can't talk to the police or even consult with the Brace Guild about this. And there's no way I make enough to pay 30,000 Mira on such short notice. You think you can help me? I get where you're coming from, but what do you say about the sort of case as a fixer? We might as well try and handle it. I mean, it's a spriggan point, so why not? Yeah, I think we can handle this one. Seriously, I appreciate it. To begin with, a cop demanding hush money is a criminal offense. So, if this goes well, we should be able to wrap things up without you having to close up your shop. So now the question is how to track down the corrupt police officer, right? Exactly. So, how do you think we should go about this, my talented little helpers? <laughs> Looking down on us again? Well, it is a difficult question. From what our client told us, we can at least narrow it down to male police officers. However, since most police officers are men, it's not as if that suddenly tells us who the culprit is. So, we should start getting information by talking to their colleagues? That, that'd be pretty stupid, though. We can't just ask, Hey, Mr. Officer, you know anything about a corrupt policeman in town? You're right. If we, any, if we say anything like that, we might just irritate the police, and we could even alert the culprit. Hmm. hmm. Oh, I know. What if we act like we're victims of a scam involving counterfeit goods? Acting like victims? What are you expecting to get out of that? First, we report to each policeman that a shop is making fake products, and we see what their reaction is. Then, seeing how they act with that knowledge, we may be able to narrow down our target. Wow, that's a brilliant idea, Fairy! Huh, it's not a bad way to gather information. <laughs> exactly. Not bad, Fairy. I gotta say, that's pretty clever. Alright, let's get started and see what we can find. Unjust hush money started. <laughs> oh, man. It's nice to see Fairy coming up with a good idea there. Alright, so... We know that the person's a male cop, but we can still talk to female cops as well. She's got a very cute NPC design, I gotta say. Maybe I just like ladies in uniform. Whatever. Even though we even though we know the dirty cop is a male, let's try talking to her just in case. Hey, sorry to bother you, but do you have a second? Oh, hello. How can I help you? I got tricked into buying a, a knockoff souvenir from a sales stand over there. And when I asked to make a return, he blew me off. I'm not sure it'll work out, but would you be able to help me get a refund? I see. Well, that is really unfortunate to hear. I would love to help you with your situation, but... 
With the film festival so close, we have no choice but to focus on the high priority cases for now. Aw, I guess it would be pretty hard for you to help us at the moment. Trying to crack down on people who run those types of businesses are troublesome. Regardless, we don't plan to leave shops like that alone forever. If you like, I can give you a damage report so you can fill it out and return it to the station. We won't be able to get to it until the film festival is over, but it will help us to give that stall a strong reprimand, or maybe even file to get it removed from the, from the city. That sounds great. Thank you so much for your help. Alright, on to the next officer. Alright, so let's go off to the guy in front of the station. Ugh, heat is brutal as ever. Hey buddy, you got a moment? Hmm? You need something from me? Actually, I was tricked into buying a fake souvenir by a seller around here. I was trying to return and get my money back, but he doesn't want to hear it. Oh, one of those knockoff sellers? I've been seeing a few reports of that lately. I get it. Those guys are great at talking you to into purchase and then causing a mess for you. Do you think it'd be possible for you to help us to get a return? <sighs> Truth is, even if you try to shut down their stop, shop, they'll just pop up somewhere else and start over all over again. As soon as the counterfeit business is reported to us, they close shop and set up something else with a different product. At least in your case with a single souvenir, you really didn't lose that much, right? Oh, well, when you put it like that... Just take this as a lesson learned on how things work around here. Think of what you lost as a lesson for your whatever. Huh, you're trying to tell us we got what we deserved? Is that really something a policeman like you should be saying? Don't go taking your anger out on me, young man. It's not like we have resources to spare. All the Tharbad police are focused on monitoring the film festival's operations. We've even had to call an external help to help manage it. Our focus right now is making sure that the actors and venues are safe, and giving directions to the outside help we've brought in. I've got bigger things to worry about than petty crimes like this. And there's lots of people around. It's hard to slack off and it's getting exhausting. Hey buddy, you think I'm deaf? Uh, but I guess if he's not going to do anything, this one's a lost cause. Let's try talking to another cop then. Copy that. Oh man. Nate, was it you? Are you the dirty cop? Yo, detective, how's your date going? Stay out of my business, friggin'. What do you want now? Don't just waltz over here to chat like we're buddies. Oh, of course, if you have any concerns, Anyas, you can reach out and I'll help however I can. We're in the middle of a date and you've got the nerve to say something like that to her? Uh, uh, wait, that's not what I meant. I meant I can help her as an officer of the law. Uh, <laughs> maybe we should try talking to Detective Nate about the issue with dirty cops. Although it does seem like he's only here for vacation. Yeah, asking him about corrupt cops or knockoff sellers probably won't give us any results. If anything, talking to him about it might just make this even more of a pain. Well, I guess we should just keep looking around for now. I love that Nate is an option for this quest. <laughs> Just because you get to bully him so much. Yeah. And if you're wondering why I'm giving him the Gilbert voice, well... I mean, really, you shouldn't need to wonder why I'm giving him the Gilbert voice. He is just... He is just Gilbert incarnate. What do we got over here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't... I... This is another quest entirely. Uh, so I actually want to use my fast travel system. Go to the Bazaar District.
head all the way over here to this cop. Hey officer, you got a moment to help us? Oh, um, yes. What can I do for you? Actually, a sales vendor tricked me into buying a knockoff souvenir. I wanted to get my money back, but when I asked for it, he refused. What? You just got tricked by a scammer? Recently, these fake brand merchants have been a rampant issue for us. It's best to weed them out as soon as possible. We'll definitely arrest him, so don't you worry. Huh. Seems like we can count on you. It's my duty to maintain a safe environment for every resident in the city. Can you point out which vendor sold you the fake souvenir? It was the one out in the street in front of the casino. Wait, speaking honestly about this should be okay, right? Let's just see what he does next. On the street in front of the casino? That's the first time I've heard of any sellers being set up there. Oh, I just remembered though. Unfortunately, I have requests that we must prioritize the safety of the film festival first. Under most circumstances, we'd solve problems like this immediately. But right now, we have to handle this at a later date. Oops, sorry. I hope I can do right for everyone who is affected by the scammer and eventually get their money back. Understood. Thank you very much for your time. Well, I guess we'll be waiting to hear good news from you then. Problem? I think we've talked with enough police officers at this point. We've gotten some pretty good info, I'd say. Well, we've certainly asked around a lot, but do you really think we got anything out of it? There's one part I'm stuck on. Hmm, yes. While we can't really verify it... Uh, wait, am I the only one who's missing something? We can probably confirm our suspicion by talking to the shopkeeper directly. Let's head back to our client, guys. Okay, and if you're curious about their names, uh, Kelvin is the name of the guy who was by the station, Vernier was the lady cop, and uh, Camillo was the last guy we just met. I see. So you guys contacted the police. Give it to me straight. You end up finding who the dirty cop is? Yeah, we were able to figure out who threatened you after talking with a few of them. We even ended up speaking with the guy who we think is our suspect. Wait, what? Wait, one of those three was the culprit? That's right. It was subtle, but one of them acted differently somehow. Well, if you're sure enough to say that to her client, then I bet it's him. We'll have to bring Marcello along to where the cop is and try judging his reaction. Works for me. I can recognize his face easily. By the way, did you manage to get his name? Yes, the policeman's name is... Is it Kelvin, Vernier, or Officer Camillo? Uh, the answer is Camillo, because Camillo was the last guy we talked to. He gave us the name Officer Camillo, though I'm not certain that's his real name. What, Officer Camillo? I don't believe it. He seemed like an upstanding person, didn't he? And furthermore, out of all the people he talked to, he was clearly the most passionate one about taking care of the issue. Yeah, and that was the major problem. Officer Vernier was also passionate when we spoke with her, but she, talk she talked about how difficult it was to actually arrest knockoff merchants. Officer Kelvin gave us the same reasoning, telling us that stopping one of them typically ends with another one showing up. Exactly. But Officer Camillo, er, on top of that, during the film festival, neither of them could prioritize solving small crimes. Exactly. But Officer Camillo did say that he will arrest them. Perhaps being so confident wouldn't be so strange if he were actually as passionate about his job as he seemed, but... As soon as we told him which shop it was, he seemed to stop caring at all. Uh, oh, so basically... That reaction would make perfect sense if he was our guy, wouldn't it? He thought he may have found another shop to use the same trick on, on as you to demand more hush money. But when he learned we were talking about you, who he's already got money from, he just got disappointed. Uh, I see. 
That definitely sounds like it might be him, then. Well, we're just speculating based on what he said, aren't we? I think it's a bit too early to call him the culprit for certain. Yeah, though we've still got our second problem to deal with. It's also possible that he's not even a real cop. He might be a swindler himself. B what? But surely he was wearing an official policeman uniform, right? He was. But I take it I'm not the only one who thought that something about his uniform seemed off. Well, it is true that his uniform seemed much newer than the other's officers. With all of the sandstorms in Tharbad, it would have been normal if it was a bit more worn out. It's not impossible for him to keep his uniform really clean, but... His actions in that pristine uniform create a strong basis for our suspicion up until this point, I think. Agreed. From here on, I don't think we have any choice but to talk to him again. Here I was, thinking the Tharbad policemen were nothing but scum. Turns out that bastard wasn't even a cop. He thinks he can get away with doing whatever he wants? Let's go show him his place, shall we? Whoa, calm down there a second. If he's not a real cop, we should be even more concerned about how we confront him. Wait, what are you talking about? Impersonating a police officer is risky business. Nevertheless, he's been calm doing that and just going around the city as he please. Yeah, that, that son of a bitch has got to be aiming for something bigger than skimming off shopkeepers. That's right. Since we don't know what his actual goals are, we should proceed carefully and try to negotiate with him. You can leave the negotiating to me. No reason to risk more issues by having you get close to the police. We'll do all we can on our end to help you through this, Mr. Marcello. Damn it, I guess you're right. I'll be counting on you guys. Now, are we ready to take Marcello along and go meet Camillo? Yes. That was, uh, go back to Camillo. Hey, uh, sorry to bother you again, but I had another thing to ask you about. Oh, you're that group from before. So, truth is, we're a solutions office. We've been conducting an investigation on behalf of our client here. He runs a shop selling knockoff goods, and he says a corrupt cop's been extorting him for hush money. Hmm. Alright, I understand. But what does this have to do with me? Don't drag this crap out! I know what your face looks like! Spriggan, you had it right. This is the same bastard who threatened me. If you don't want a lawsuit, quit trying to extort me! Uh, Bubba, please try to stay calm. Look, I don't know what you're screaming about. But let's just say if there's something you want retracted, I can retract it. Does that make you feel any better? I can't be bothered about this anymore, so run along now. What? Sorry, but this conversation isn't over. There's no way my client can trust a liar like you to actually keep your word. The hell's that supposed to mean? Tell me your home department and your full name. I'd like to contact and confirm your position with the Tharbad Police Department right now. Even if you're assigned from somewhere outside of Tharbad, they should be able to look you up. <clears throat> hmm? What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? On top of that, mind showing us your police journal? If you hand that over, we can just take a quick look. What the? I have no obligation to comply to any of your foolish demands. You keep prying and I'll have you all arrested on obstruction for justice. In that case, you'd bring us all to the station. And then what? You'll be exposed for being a fake police officer. That... His reaction says it all. He's only pretending to be a cop. You bastard. Why don't I beat some sense into you? Hey, don't be stupid! Stay back! Just listen to whatever I say and shut up! <gasps> Damn, I just warned him! Are you sure this is a good idea? We're drawing a lot of attention right now. Everyone, please remain calm. This just went from bad to worse. Damn it, my client's gonna get stabbed if I don't think fast. I'll resolve this safely for the client, 
apprehending this guy might not be easy. On the other hand, sometimes you need to be willing to make some sacrifices to take out the trash. What should my priority be? Uh, do I prioritize the safety of my client? Or prioritize capturing the fake police officer? Ugh. Look, it would look bad on our reputation if we let our client get stabbed. So, unfortunately, we have to prioritize his safety. No, I need to prioritize the client's safety. I need to think of a bluff or something that I can use to get him out of there. Listen here, pal. You better not make another move. The real police are on their way as we speak. Even if you don't, you should understand that we've got enough manpower to catch you ourselves, right? That said, if you let our client go, we'll do the same for you. Well, in addition, you have to promise not to mess with him again after this. You can imagine what I'll do to you if you don't agree, do you? Uh, uh, uh. If you're lying to me, I uh, know, know that you won't get away with this. I'm not, so back away and get the hell out of my sight. I know how to keep a promise. Guess I got no choice. Big bro will get pissed if the police catch me. <sighs> That's a relief. Um, looks like things worked out after all. Uh, I thought I was done for. Things would have gone better for us if you didn't rush out on your own like that. I'm sorry, I just... I got so mad, I couldn't control myself. Well, the important news is that you're safe, right? So I guess that's case closed, huh? Sure is. Hopefully he won't come back after a client after having to deal with us. I still don't know what his goal was, but that's one more request complete. Afterwards, Van and his helpers explained what happened to the bystanders, though slightly obscuring the truth. Having ensured that there won't be a big fuss around the incident, they return to Marcello's shop. <sighs> y'all saved my ass back there. Seriously, thank you all so much. I'll even bump up your payment. Awesome. Pony up as much as you like. Though I'm not particularly in the market for any knockoff goods. <laughs> if you say so. You know, what the culprit said at the end there really had me thinking. He mentioned a big brother, right? I wonder if he wasn't working alone. He seemed like Van was right to think that he probably had another goal besides just threatening merchants. I don't care what his plans were as long as they got nothing to do with our job. The police and the bracers can worry about whatever else he tries to pull. That they can. Let's just pray that he doesn't get involved with our work again. I guess we should keep them in mind, but let's just get moving to our next job. Unjust Hush Money complete. SB up by 2. Receive 3500 Mira as payment. Alright, we got some Law Points, and we got some Chaos Points. We could have got more chaos points if we chose to capture the guy, but uh, again, we're not doing that. Our client safety comes first. We're we're gonna save though. Because we got one more side quest to do. Talk to this man here. It's, uh, Odie Asman. No, no, his name is Osman. I'm sorry. Just as I thought, you still haven't returned. I thought you'd find your way back soon, but now I'm getting worried. What's going on with that man? He seems really bothered by something. Whatever it is, it'd probably be a headache for us to get involved. But it might just be a, the sort of job for our solutions office, don't you think? Plus, it may help us grasp more of the state of affairs here in Tharbad. Hey, if that's how you feel, it doesn't hurt to chat with him for a bit. Hey, what's got you looking so down? Who are you guys? 
we're the Arc Ride Solutions Office, here in town on a little business trip. We specialize in the types of jobs the police and guild won't accept. Depending on your situation, we might be able to help you. For real? I'm really glad you chose to approach me then. But you only take requests that the authorities and guild don't accept, huh? If that's the case, I don't think you can help me. What has you looking so worried, sir? I'm a fruit wholesaler for Tharbad. And well, I decided to save some money this time and skipped on hiring an escort for my trek across the desert. Since I'm comfortable enough with the route, I thought I was going to be okay. But then I ran into some problems. We were hit by a desert storm out of nowhere, lost our way, and even got attacked by monsters. That sounds terrible. I'm glad you're safe at least. <laughs> sounds like karma to me. Our caravan barely escaped with our lives. My camel should have been following right behind me, but at the end of the trip I noticed he disappeared. The camel was containing was carrying a container of rare produce. I'd like to find both the food and my camel as soon as possible. Rare produce, huh? What kind, if I may ask? It's not something super well-known or anything. Just a bit of raw cocoa. <gasps> raw cocoa? Wasn't that the special ingredient in the Meltifa we had earlier? Er, Melfita? I think I may have heard of cocoa before. Can't say I'm 100% sure what it is, though. I see. So it sounds like I need to start explaining what cocoa is from the start. The primary ingredient in chocolate is cocoa beans, taken from the crew taken from the fruit of cocoa trees. But that fruit also has a fleshy part to it. And that fleshy part is what we know as raw cocoa. It can be pretty hard to come by. Oh, that's exactly right. You're quite knowledgeable. Well, considering its strong combination of sweet and acidic flavors, as well as an addictive tinge of bitterness, it makes it a delicious ingredient that really reminds you of the Middle East. Chocolate's always taken such good care of me. I've been dying to get the chance to try some real cocoa. Seriously, do you have to do this every time? And I hope you know we lost you at Chocolate taking care of you. He's master switching into his candy enthusiast mode in a single instant. <laughs> I'm interested in learning more about this myself. I'm curious if I'll like it too. Oh, if you're curious, I'll gladly offer you some. Of course, that's dependent on whether or not we can actually find our camel. It's not every day I get the chance to eat raw cocoa. Even if this type of request is typically something for the guild, I've got to take this one! <laughs> you can say no, which is funny. We're, we're just taking this request, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. There's nothing to be done. We just have to make an exception this time. We'll accept your request. Are you serious? You're a lifesaver! Well, we're also concerned about your camel, so we're more than glad to help. We find the camel and get sweets as part of our payment? Sounds like two birds, one stone to me. Can't believe I'm hearing this from a guy who's supposed to be running a fixer office. Although getting the chance to go on the sand dunes and stretch her legs a bit sounds like it could be pretty fun. Glad to hear it. Let's head out to the dunes then. Can you tell me around where the monster attacked you? I think it was pretty close to town. Looking at it on a map, it should be just beyond the west side of the dunes. The west side. Alright, got it. The camel couldn't have wandered too far away then. Let's start by searching the spot where the caravan was attacked. And away we go. Let's head out right away. Camel time. Camel time. Welcome to the Heat Haze Dunes. God, I'm sweating just thinking about going into the desert. Damn, are we really supposed to walk through an area this big? It's so hot, even though it's already October. Don't slow down, you two. 
We gotta kick up the pace, okay? I thought that was all the map for a second, but, uh, actually... Actually... Look at all of these red dots. That is absurd. Good thing we don't have to go quite that far. I want to fill out my map a bit, so I'm doing a bit of, uh, meandering as I head to our destination. Oh god, there's treasures here? This is the map where they're like, haha, good luck getting 100% of, uh, items, you dumb bitch. There's no way in hell. was a good chunk of experience. Maybe I should actually be fighting some of these monsters. Check out this luggage. Looks like it was dropped in the area recently. It's possible this was dropped by the caravan when they were attacked by monsters. Still don't see the camel around here. You think a monster ate it? Don't talk like that. I'd feel bad for the camel. Hey, just messing with you, Squirt. Problem's predicting where they went from here. With this heat, they probably went looking for water, or a shaded area. According to our map, there aren't any oasises nearby. Maybe not, but if it couldn't find any water, it probably went to find another source of hydration. If you crack open a cacti, you can get some water from their leaves. My tribe does the same thing sometimes when extreme environments like this. Oh, good thinking, fairy. I wouldn't be too surprised if Camel that's used to crossing the desert knows how to do the same thing. Drinking from a cactus? How novel! <laughs> Didn't expect to learn something from the little runt. Aw, all the compliments are getting a little embarrassing. But unfortunately, just by looking around, it doesn't seem like any nearby cacti have been cracked open. Maybe the desert storm forced it to take shelter somewhere else. It's more likely that someone in an area like that may have already broken some cacti open there, too. So, what do you think of looking over there? I bet some boulders like that might make for some good cover from the sandstorms. Well, it's not a bad bet. Let's go take a look over there. Yeah, if I want to explore this area thoroughly, I would definitely need a, a map. so hard to, like, set that flip one in place.
Holy crap. Why is this map like this? I hate it. Oh, we found the camel. Damn, they got it surrounded. That's probably our camel. Let's take him out. Uh, the sands really weigh us down, but this is no time to fall behind. Let's do our best together, Anyas. Alright, that was some pretty good damages. <sighs> that was a bit more stressful than I would have liked. Yeah, but at least we found the camel safe and sound. It's like I said, all he needed was a drink of water. He must be tired from lugging all that cargo on his back. Speaking of the cargo, is the cocoa undamaged? I don't really care either way. But it could be the straw that breaks the camel's back for the old man. Uh, I'm checking it now. Hmm. So, how's it look? Van seems pretty nervous. What seems to be the problem, Van? In the end, Van and the others brought the camel back to Tharbad. Oh, thank you guys so much. When you guys didn't come back for a while, I was getting worried. But you brought my baby back in one piece. Yeah, just as requested. This was supposed to be a light diversion, but we ended up having to put in some real legwork. And the desert heat is quite intense. But all of our hard work paid off. So about the chocolate, we should be able to eat it, right? Therein lies the problem. The outside of the cocoa fruit is fine, but my question is... Did the fresh cocoa inside survive? About that. I broke open one of them and it seems that there's only small scratches. This is a real miracle. Thank you so much. But I can't just give you words of thanks. I want you to try a drink made from the fresh cocoa. It's got a unique flavor that I'm excited for you to try. Whoa, the juice has a milky appearance to it. I had no idea that raw cocoa was white. It looks nothing like chocolate, but it's still so good. That's right. Only the beans themselves have a brown color. Well, let's see how it tastes. Everyone takes a sip of the cocoa juice. Wow, wasn't expecting that. It's got a flavor that reminds me of southern fruits. Its flavor is also pretty distinct from the Melfita. It tastes a little bitter, but it goes down smooth. Yeah, even better than what the rumors said. The exquisite balance between the bitter sweetness is addictive, and the way it grazes your palate with a small yet perfect hint of natural flavor is utterly divine. The chocolate made from the fresh cocoa really makes all the difference. <laughs> well, with a compliment like that, I'd say it's well worth it. I'll put some other samples into a bag for you to take home with you. Uh, looks like I'll be putting on some extra weight. I owe you. What? After you rescued my camel, I'm the one who's supposed to be expressing my gratitude. Let us thank the goddess for this fateful encounter. Searching for a stray camel complete. 3,500 Mira acquired. Alright. Get some free law points for our trouble. Alright. 
let's continue on with the main stuff, shall we? That was a fun little diversion. I would have to agree. Um, also, Marcello's shop is open to us now, so let's see what he's got for sale. Uh, evasion plus three, magic evasion plus six percent. Nothing, nothing special. Wait. Lelouch! What are you doing running a nightclub? Is this what the Zero Requiem was for? So you could just retire and run off to freaking run a titty bar? I approve. It's much better than being the emperor of the world. Wait, what's this place called? Oh, Moulin. Yeah, that makes sense. Hell yeah, now we're talking! Don't get too excited, Helper 3. Remember, we're here for work. This guy doesn't actually have a translated dialogue. I just wanted to see if he had anything. Had anything for us. That NPC looks cool. Also, familiar faces. Oh, it's you guys. I figured we'd be able to meet again soon. Sounds like you were able to get off to a good start then. Wait, I thought you guys were supposed to be showing up tomorrow. And I had no idea that you'd be arriving too, Bermati. Uh, my plans changed a bit, and I ran into him on co by coincidence on the train. And we decided to keep it a secret so we could surprise you, dear Van. But the truth is, I'm here on invitation to participate in a bartending contest at the film festival. Who would have thought that Van Chan would be here too? This must be fate! Well, that part's a coincidence, but I guess that helps explain it a bit. And Dingo, you're not just here to give a Spriggan request, but also to cover the festival, right? Seems like something a pretty ordinary thing to cover for you. Yes, well, something here caught my eye. Caught your eye? Is it something to do with the festival? Is this about Nina's request? No, it's something completely different, actually. Well, I guess I can't say I know for a fact it's totally unrelated. Oh, and where are you going with this? Could this be related to that one case you've always been chasing? You never did give me all the details about that. Well, yeah, I admit it is. Please excuse me, Mr. Bomati, Sir Brad. Oh? Yeah, what is it? I apologize for the sudden interruption, but I have been entrusted with a certain message for Sir Brad. A woman named Miss Amy contacted the front desk not long ago. What? Who might that be? Wait, do you mean Mariel? Oh, right, that idiot reporter who was making the mess in Langport. Oh, that's the girl from Tyrell who's always chasing after you, isn't it, Dingo? Did she come all the way here just to meet you? Wow, you two must be on excellent terms. I, I told her to stay out of this one. Sorry, I'll talk to you later. I don't trust that guy. He looks too, uh... He looks too ungeneric to be, you know, just a rando NPC. And he even has a voice, so... Can't be trusted. <laughs> well, seems like Dingo's being pulled around a bit. And it seems like you don't want to leave him alone with it. That reminds me, the bartender tournament is taking place in the lobby of the Al Jamira Hotel. If you happen to be in the area, please feel free to stop by and say hello. I'll let you know if I come across any juicy info so I can give you some. So do your best, everyone. Yeah, we'll be counting on you. Good luck in your bartender tournament. I'll have you make a cocktail soon, so I can give you some feedback. Aaron, we're here to work. Wow, 
I can't believe that Mr. Bermotti himself is gracing the bartending contest with his presence. Do you know him? He's quite famous around these parts. He's borrowing our bar here to practice a bit for a contest, but if anything, I'm hoping I can watch and learn from him. Hey dears, you surprised to find me bartending here? I want to shock you all with what I can whip up at the bartending contest, so I'll be spending my day practicing here. I can't believe both you and Dingo came all the way out here. Well, as long as you're both here, I may as well put you to use. More importantly, they're doing a bartending contest? That sounds like fun. Yes, they're holding it alongside this year's film festival. They personally invited me to participate, so it would have been rude to refuse, no? Still, you're putting in extra work by practicing at a local bar? You've got more self-discipline than you'd think, looking at you from a glance. I've got some friends among the local bartenders here, so they were generous enough to lend me the place. By the way, I plan to flex my skills over the hotel tonight, so feel free to drop by. We'll buy his drinks, why not? Yeah, I don't trust dealer man here. Apparently she has lines. This casino sure is a fun place. Gambling is thrilling, and watching people is even more interesting. And at this very moment, I'm sure there's all sorts of people facing off. That dealer with the glasses over there seems to know all about this sort of stuff. He seems to be a very interesting man. Okay, so this guy's line was, Welcome, could I interest you in some card games? They're quite fascinating games, really. When you become experienced at it, you gain the ability to see into your opponent's soul. Alright, so I've dealt with my spriggan requests. Let me give Elaine and Anyaz these items I found. Let's go give Shahina and uh, Sara their, their autographs. Did I actually buy stuff from this shop? I don't think I did. She's got a few ingredients, so... Pick those up. I don't think I bought anything from this guy either. Might as well get my gourmet points up. Anyway, before we go see the dancers, let's go talk to uh, uh, old man Fajir here. I'll introduce Shinam to everyone at the bazaar. I'm sure everyone will scold her for what she's done, of course, but I think it's necessary they vent their frustration. And there, from there, they can work to make a... And hopefully from there, they can work to make up. I see. Do your best. We'll be supporting you. I'm sure some of them won't be happy with me showing my face around here. Especially since I don't feel particularly guilty for stealing anything. Like I said, I only did what I did to avoid starving. Alright, then go ahead and tell them to that frankly. I'm sure many of them understand your situation. If you understand the act itself was wrong, you should face it honestly. But like I said, I don't think it was wrong. Uh... Mm. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It looks like you need to eat first. Come on, don't laugh at me. I hope things will go well between her and the merchants. Me too. Oh, hello everyone. It's nice to see you all again. Hi Shahina. Hi Sara. Could this place be... That's right. It's not much, but we call it home. Let's go in and we'll make you some chai. Uh, wait, actually, we have a show coming up. Hey, being busy is a good thing. There's no more trouble like you had this morning, right? Fortunately, there's been nothing like that. 
We've had so many more customers than usual, but they've been paying attention to their manners, fortunately. Maybe word spread that you guys saved us before. Uh, I just want to go home and take a nice warm bath. I know what you mean, but we just need to hang in there a little bit longer. Well, if any of those idiots show up again, I'll make sure to give them a piece of my mind. Thank you very much. Well, we'll be taking our leave now. By the way, you're a pretty cool guy, but you're not allowed to make any passes at my sister. She already has a boyfriend, all right? Oh, is that so? She's a good kid, so I'm not surprised at all. Though, if it's just some poser, you could pretty easily steal her anyway. What are you two talking about over there? Huh? Shahina, we should really get going. Here I come. Later, guys. Oh, we forgot about the autograph. We totally forgot to give it to her, didn't we? Well, they've got a performance right now. Well, maybe we'll see them again soon. Oh, this is just a normal phone call. Good afternoon, Fairy's Guardian. I'm the landlady of the inn. Do you have a moment? Uh, of course. Did something happen? No, actually. I have someone I want to introduce to you lot. Would you mind stopping by once you're done with your tasks? Well, it depends on the content and payment of the request. Where specifically are we going? You should be able to get more details if you ask around at the public bath in the traditional district. Thank you for then. Ooh, that was weird. Thanks in advance. The landlady of the inn? And the bathhouse? Did they run into trouble, perhaps? Well, we might as well go see what it's about. It's been so hot, so a bath sounds like a great idea right now. Your weird sauna obsession aside, that does sound pretty nice. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Well then, should we go check it out after we finish our work for the day? I'm going to save here. All right. The Hamam Marjan. Good afternoon, Mr. Jaham. It's been a while. Oh, it's Fairy. I haven't seen you for a whole year. I heard about you from Hala. You're the Solutions Office, right? Yeah, I'm Arkride from the Capitol. We heard about you from the landlady, but would you mind going into a bit more detail? Yes, uh, perhaps it'd be faster if I just showed you. Huh? Where's the water? There's no water at all? Since a time long past, water from the oasis normally flows underground through here and wells up. But just this morning, it stopped without explanation. I see. Has that ever happened before? No, not once. The water from the oasis has been flowing steadily here for 20 years now. A great scholar did a survey and implemented flawless flood prevention measures by a dam. A great scholar? I believe Professor L. Hamilton worked on the waterways here. Thanks to her work, the oasis nearly tripled in size. And I believe that's one of the main reasons Starbad has grown into such a booming city of entertainment. That's right! She really was a remarkable woman. I actually had the chance to see her back then, and she was very clearly a kind-hearted person. Huh. Well, that aside... There's no issues with the Oasis, then the problem must be coming from the underground waterway, right? Yes, that's what I'm worried about. I have to figure out the cause if I want to resume my business. Sadly, the guild is loaded up with work right now, so the earliest they could send people was tomorrow. I don't mind paying a bit more. I just figured I'd see what you thought. Huh, so we'd be doing this in place of the guild, then. But Sara said we should stop by after they finish work. 
Right, and this doesn't seem to be connected with our main request here. Do you think we can still do something? Hmm. Understood. I think we'll take on this case of yours. And in addition to the fee you would have paid to the guild, how about you give us each a free bath? <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Well then, please wait a moment. Receive the key for the underground waterway. Head out and turn right, and you'll find an old maintenance store. That leads to the entrance of the old underground waterway. Monsters are prowling around down there, so please do be careful. Right, got it. Well, let's go take care of this so we can get our bath. See, that's dumb. <laughs> the way the red mark looked, like it looked like you had to go through the bathhouse, but I was like, nope, no, you're not, you're not allowed to do that. Well, this should be the entrance. I gotta ask, what were you thinking when you accepted this request? You smell something fishy going on? Hmm. You're sharp, kid. Yeah, sorta, though. It's just, nothing's happened in this waterway for the past 20 years, and now, all of a sudden, it's like this? It just seems off to me, is all. Oh. Probabilistically speaking, it does seem like something is there. So far, we haven't come across any thugs or unusual monsters or whatever. But at the same time, we've had a reaction from the Genesis, and we've got that threat letter. There seems to be signs everywhere. Oh. Speak of the devil. I wonder what's lurking beyond here. All we can do now is find out. This place is pretty bright for an underground waterway. Yeah, there's a lot of light coming in from the surface. But it looks like the water's stopped. So, we need to find out what's blocking it up ahead. Well, as long as it's shining, we can't be too cautious. Right, let's be very careful and move out. I don't know what for, but I'll take it.
I don't know what that was. Seems like we can't activate that for now. Let, let me go down. Onigashimasu. Alright, what do we got for... 75 different monsters? I guess that was what I got the trophy for. Monster's dead. Get those out of here. Hmm. Whoa. Not what I wanted to do. At all. See what's up here. Treasure. That was worth it. Uh, mine too. Okay. Seems I can't do anything about those until I get the water going. I think that's what they're saying. Because they're powered by the water wheels. Okay, that makes sense. Not that you could tell that by... <laughs> by just looking. But hey. If I spoke Japanese, that's probably what Van's saying. It's probably just like, yeah, we should get the water going before messing with these switches. got a craft. Dude. 
Alright. Uh, defense, an arts defense up. Uh, a wind status ailment. I gotta say, I like when Van does those time bolt things, it's just like, yeah, you know, deal with it. Hey Al, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing well, uh, we're just in early chapter 3 right now. We just went to Tharbad, and we're trying to figure out what's blocking this underground waterway. It's actually my massive nuts. No, that'd be, that'd be terrible. Have you been? Hope you're doing well. Treasure gets. This is just uh, HP recovery. Okay. This this still doesn't work. I don't know why I keep trying to do that, but uh, those won't work until the water is actually flowing around here. So I actually took the wrong turn when I went this way. I'm good, just enjoying the weekend. That's always fun. I've just been uh, doing doing a lot of streams lately, so I've been feeling good because Kuro Nikiseki is a very addicting game. <laughs> there we go. Die, die, monster! You don't belong in this world. He's all with the good shit, and uh, Fairy, you get to kill them all. No, oh, they're still alive. Okay. Luckily, Anya's is pretty good at cleaning up. Oh, uh, Anya's is hollow core leveled up. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, you want to play it on PC? That makes sense. I, I definitely want... I'd want to get it on PC, uh, too, preferably. After encountering that slowdown with the end of Chapter 2 boss, I, I, I worry that the PS4 can't quite handle the, uh, the important bits. I also don't... If I did have it on PC, I wouldn't have to deal with the Sony Stewart PS4 share shit, too. Which hopefully doesn't, you know, affect this LP event in any sort of way. Uh, it didn't affect me for, uh, CS3 and CS4, or Hachimari, but... I had an issue with Atelier Ryza recently, so maybe... Well, who knows? We'll see. Oh, there's still one live over there? Oh, whatever. Can't go over there anyway. Man, the water level really is low. We're in the middle of the desert, but still, most of the people take comforts like water for granted. I'm even more in awe of Professor Hamilton's work here. see it in the distance there. No, I haven't cooked this one before. too much about art, so I do want to get some more uh, Mira. Because I need to buy weapons. Every little bit of damage will help in the long run. And I have just enough to get everything I need. I can also customize these up so they're even stronger. So yeah, Aaron's at 400, Fairy 384, Anya's 316, but functionally 388, and Van's at 446. So yeah, we're we're looking pretty good here. Let's save and fight this boss. You're kidding me. Voracious tree monster, Hydra Nubia. A plant type monster. It's rather large, and it looks like it's soaking up all the water. Looks like it's growing off the oasis water and the sunlight that's leaking in. I'd say we found our culprit, wouldn't you? Wait a second, there's a Genesis there. Guys. This thing is huge, and not just its trunk. Let's take it out quickly. I can't believe they just stuck a Genesis on this thing. Like, why? Um, battle time.
Oh, everyone's blinded? Yeesh. Oh, okay, that's why I have two health bars. I was like, wait, what? Shields actually do things in this game? Crazy. Alright, what's my new crap? Did I even get one? I guess it's this. I guess it's a... Yeah. Okay. No, I've had that one before. What? I'm not sure. I'm getting a lot of shard activations, holy crap. Wow, I really hate when you can't see where the uh, actual things are. I might need to take advantage of that. Ouch. I get to go next. Okay. Great fighting food ons. We got gotcha. you. Alright, 
how can I get? Nah, it should work. Stop with this healing bullshit, I swear. Oh my god. Alright, on is next. Okay, I thought Anya's had S-Craft ready, she did not, so that was a fuck up on my part. So now I get to lose this fight. I'm just on normal difficulty, so... I don't think this fight is particularly hard if I was using, like, optimal strategies or anything, but I'm really not. Fuck. Oh no, I had just enough. I thought I was short on damage. Alright. Everyone got their levels, it's fine. Simple as that. Huh. Is everyone okay? I am. It's really strong, though. Hmm. What is that? An angel? Get down! You. An evil mallet? That belongs to Anyez! Huh? What the heck are those insane moves? Hm. Van! You can't! Shit, I don't need you covering me! Yeah, looks like it's my time to shine! It's that thing from before. Mayor? So you showed up then. I accept, so let's just do this. Hey, don't be in such a hurry. Well, I suppose it's fine. Alright then, take the Grendel. Thou scarcely needst don it. Thou art thyself the nightmare. Yo, what the fuck?
What? What, what is that? What the hell? He looks like he's in, he's in a lot of pain. Stop it, please. If this continues. I don't know what's going on. No, it couldn't be. Why is he red? Don't get cocky now. We won't let you get any closer. Ugh. Van, keep it together. Please, just calm down. We're here for you. Anya's. Ugh. What was that? Boom. Huh? What was that? Looks like I made it in time. Oh shit. She's even got her own theme music. Yo, what the fuck? Aren't you? I don't know who you might be, but this is my contractor. If you intend to harm him, you'll be dealt with in accordance to company regulations. I see. So you're with them. We've retrieved what we've needed. There is no cause for further conflict. Let us move out. Ishtani. Altina, no! No, it's 100% not Altina. <laughs> what the fuck? Who was... Some kind of angel puppet? <gasps> the Genesis! Don't. There's nothing we can do now. Yes, and we're all safe at least. Van? Eh, looks like you pulled through then. Van, are you alright? You aren't injured, right? Just a few scrapes and bruises. Feel pretty exhausted, though. Looks like Princess just up and left, too. You're here. And this device. Just what in the world is going on? Not to mention, I never thought you'd show up for support with such perfect timing. Supporting my contractor is my proud duty, after all. Additionally, this served as an opportunity for me to confirm a rather fascinating phenomenon that I couldn't quite comprehend during your appraisal. Ugh, well, I guess that cat's out of the bag then. Oh. <laughs> Never thought this is how we'd finally meet in person. Yes, this is rather surprising to me as well. You just show up out of nowhere and all of a sudden you're acting all buddy-buddy. We saw you when you called out of... We saw you when you called before, but who are you? I believe you said you were in charge of something related to Van from some company? Ugh, well, that's on me for not explaining earlier. Alright, I'm fine now. <laughs> I do apologize. I am a member of the PMC, Marduk Comprehensive Security. 
Reset Twining, service concierge at your service. Fan is one of our external contracted testers. In this capacity, I am often in his care. I hope we can get along. Alright, well, new party member get. Whoop whoop. I was so certain that we'd be getting Judith next because, I mean, we saw her again here. But, uh, nope, surprise, it's Rosette. The Marduk Company. That's a name I've heard from time to time recently. It's a security company based abroad, correct? That is correct. We are based out of Ored State. It has not been long since our company was founded, but we already have a good number of patrons in the Republic. I am with the Tactical Development Department, and Van is contracted as one of our testers. My Holocore Mare and my Stun Caliber were both provided by them. Honestly, it's an equally beneficial contract. Furthermore, recently we have established connections with public order and mercenary companies in various nations. We have even begun working with the Kirka Warriors to provide technical support. Oh, I did believe I've heard about that. I had heard the rumors, but I had no idea a private military company was going to such lengths. And so the Comprehensive Security Department and the Tactical Development Departments are separate entities? You provide technical services to militaries and Jaegers from various countries. Of course, you also take a share. Sounds like it makes for pretty good business, huh? I should not be surprised, given that you are Van's assistants. I am happy that the training of the younger generation is proceeding so well. There's no younger generation about it. They're just part-timers. Alright then. So how about you explain this supposedly critical reason that you've come here? I know about your responsibilities, and I know that Marduk's counting on me as a tester. And of course, I'm grateful for all your remote Zypha maintenance. But going above and beyond all that to actually come on site with me is a bit too good for the service I'm signed up for, don't you think? So, what exactly is going on here? It is concerning your shard mysteriously going out of control and the irregularity within your hollow core, of course. Perhaps I can explain more in exchange for you telling me about that device that was snatched away earlier. Hmm. About that... This woman. <laughs> it was just a joke. Now then, concerning the true purpose of my business trip to Tharbad. I cannot deny the one purpose was indeed to contact you in person, Van. And because you cut off contact with me like that last time, I was even more concerned. You know, I really do feel bad about cutting you off like that. <laughs> you sound like a husband looking for an excuse for cheating on his wife. <sighs> Is it me, or did Anya's expression get awfully dark all of a sudden? One other reason for my visit was to conduct a direct investigation at the Tharbad Film Festival. What? Wait, really? Put plainly, this matter concerns the Messeldom Film Festival that was supposed to be held two months ago. I believe the cases may be related. So it's related to ethnic terrorism? Oh, I take it you have some information we don't. The trigger for all of this was a sequence of mysterious arsons and terror threats, resulting in the festival's cancellation. With one film festival having been cancelled due to threats of terrorism, even more attention than was anticipated has been attracted to the Tharbad Film Festival. As a result, I was dispatched to reassess our crisis management position in the Republic. Oh, I missed a line. We received a request from a local security firm which was penalized for failing to uphold their contract. I 
see. So, that's the gist of it. Um, I'm feeling pretty lost here. It sounds like your main goal is to reevaluate the security risks here in the Republic. And from there, you plan to make preparations in case you need to provide services in the future. Is that about right? Oh, and from what we've heard, it sounds like this isn't limited to just Calvard. You know, this isn't too different from what the Hey Whale Elders think. Hey boss, don't you think this all sounds kind of sketchy? I do understand your apprehension. After all, we are converting a risk of war or criminal activity into potential financial gain. However, looking at it another way, we take pride in being able to make contributions to local security. Furthermore, we are actively preparing combat countermeasures to combat international criminal organizations and crime syndicates that are incredibly dangerous. Oh. You don't mean... Thinking about it, it all makes sense. I understand. Beyond just my case, it sounds like there's some other issues that are fairly urgent. So I guess I won't pry any more into it, then. You're here under the pretense of being a dispatch employee. We're here for three days, so hopefully you'll be able to wrap things up by then. Your skills and tactical abilities are even higher than I imagined. I'll be relying on you more and more, then. Yes, and I on you, Van. Huh? Well, wait a second, does that mean... Hang on, you want this woman hanging around with us now? Oh. Look, if you guys are opposed to it, we don't have to. Although, when you consider what happened earlier, we could probably use all the help we can get. Oh. Well. Hmm. I guess you're right. That nasty angel, that girl, the way they stole the Genesis. Nothing's concrete yet, but it definitely reminds me of those guys. Right. So, Armada might be in Tharbad too. <laughs> Rosette Pog, Anyez is so jealous. Ugh. I don't know the specifics of the situation, but we have concluded that the possibility of that is anything but low. However, I do believe we should not rule out the possibility of another force being active here. Though I am still relatively new as a service concierge, I would like to do my part to support you as much as I can. <laughs> hmm. There's also the matter of Mare and the incident with Van. A self-aware AI able to appear at will and respond plus the phenomenon of your body being enveloped with the shard. I have been considering the possibility of developing a treatment if such a runaway occurs again. More than that, this is something I want to help with. Oh. Really now? I understand that this is a selfish request, and is likely not very convincing, but... Would you please allow me to accompany you for the next three days? Rosette? Please raise your head. We would be honored to have you with us. Your moves earlier were incredible! Based on what we saw before, you're probably more valuable than our chief. You ass! Well, I honestly can't deny that one. Thank you very much. Lady Agnes, Lady Fairy, Master Aaron. Well then, I, Rosette Twining, will temporarily transfer to the Arkride Solutions office for the next three days. Afterwards, while enjoying chai with extra milk prepared by the landlady, Van and the others explain the situation with the Genesis, Grendel, and everything that had occurred with Armada to date. They finished off by also explaining the details of their current request from the two actresses. Rosette, though very surprised by all the information, vowed to treat it as a confidential disclosure and promised not to disclose it to her other employer. 
her sign of good faith swiftly began to win over the trust of Anya's and the others. By the time the sun started to set, Van's physical condition was entirely back to normal. Before their scheduled time to report in on the day's activities to their employers came, they decided to go around and see the city at night. You have to go? Alright, see ya, Al. Thanks for stopping in and saying hello. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Take care and stay safe. Alright, alright. It's finally time to get some of that nightlife. Time to check out literally every shop with pretty ladies. Aaron? Ladies? I'm not sure about that, but boy am I hungry. Our foul mouth brat aside, we do have some time left before our appointment. While we bum around looking for a place to eat, maybe we can check out the town at night. Might not be the most efficient thing in the world, but this is the way the Spriggans work. Don't get too disappointed as you hang around with us. Oh no, it's quite interesting. Plus, there are places here I've been meaning to check out for a long time. Taking care of Spriggan requests is necessary. Gathering information about the local area from practical experience. And then finally concluding with a stop at the Al Jamira Hotel to report in. Is that the plan then? You catch on fast. It's almost creepy. Yeah, it almost feels like you've been with us this whole time. I'm starting to understand her position a little better. Oh, that's right. We have to remember to give Shahina that autograph this time. Oh right, can't forget about that. Good idea. They're probably already at home, right? Nah, I think they said something about going to the bath before turning in. Yep, they were able to reopen safely after all. We might as well stop by there too. Alright, then let's start our nighttime activities. <laughs> I'm excited to see what's in store. Receive 4,000 Mira. Rosette has joined the party. Know what that means. I have to figure out what I'm doing for my party setup. Um, obviously I want to have Rosette in. I think I'm going to swap out Fairy, actually. As much as I like Fairy. Um, let's see. Orbman is complete Garbaggio right now. Um, judging by her stats, it looks like she's a, a hybrid character? 258. Hmm. Water and wind, huh? Interesting. Do I even have any good quartz? I absolutely need to put a hit course on her because accuracy is important in this game. Um, and yeah, let's give her some arts. 258, 258. That is more than fairy on both counts. Yeah, sorry fairy, you're kind of... She's also way higher level than me too, but... You can see Van's got 299 strength. Anya's only has 257 arts. Like, yeah, no, that's... That's probably for the best. Alright. I'm gonna go take a quick break. Gotta, go, gotta use the restroom, so I'll be back in a second. I'm, I'm gonna save, though. I forgot to save. Alright, be right back.
Thanks for your patience, everyone. Let's uh, continue on, shall we? We are going to the baths first, apparently. Shahina, Sara, thought we'd find you two here. Oh, hello everyone. The manager just finished telling us about how much you guys helped today. So you took out those monsters underground and brought the bath back to life. I knew we could count on you guys. Seriously, you guys have no idea how much help you were. I just don't know how else to thank you. Hey, it's all part of our job. We actually get some benefit out of all this too. Well, that's great to hear. By the way, I don't believe we've met you before. My name is Rizet. I've recently started working with Van's group on transfer. Your names are Sara and Shahina, correct? I look forward to getting to know you better. Yes, and us as well. <gasps> that outfit, though. You must be a maid. I've never seen one in person. Well... Technically, this is the uniform of my main job. This is something of a combat uniform, designed to maximize my ability to support my customers. I don't really understand, but that's super cool. Oh, that's right. Since we're all here, how about we head in together? I have so many questions for you. Yes, that sounds lovely. Perhaps we can have dinner together as well? I know a nice place nearby. Well, since you offered, we'll take you up on that. It's good manner to wash up before we meet with our clients, anyway. Eh, <laughs> you just want to go in the bath, don't you? Not that I can blame you. I'm starving, too, so that plant sounds great to me. Well then, please show us the way. It's settled, then. Alright, come on, girls, this way. Shahina, don't run. <laughs> please, enjoy yourselves. Ugh, <sighs> guess that means it's just me and you. It's pretty lame. Shut your mouth. Just be quiet and enjoy the baths. Listen up. Close your eyes. Calm your mind. Wait for that moment to come. <laughs> They're giggling and making a real racket over there, huh? Little girls aside, that maid and Sarah have pretty nice bod, yeah? Don't disturb this sacred ritual. If you do, I'll personally scrape the defiled scum off your body until your skin is burning bright red. What do you say? Alright, alright, I get it! What the hell's with this tone? Jeez! <laughs> Man, the the devoted pervert. <laughs> Sounds like things are getting pretty lively over there. Oh, come on, they know we can hear them. But really, you girls are all so pretty. You'd even compete with Sara. Welcome to the stream, Silver. You made it. Rosette's hair is so shiny and her skin is so soft. She looks just like a doll. And you too, Agnes. There's no way you can only be 16 years old. Huh? I don't think I have any chance of looking like that a year from now. What do I have to eat to grow a pair like that? This is something I've been wondering about as well. By all means, please share your secret with me. This is totally normal! Fairy, please stop staring at me like that. Shahina, it's not nice to bully people like that. Well, I personally think you and Shahina are plenty beautiful. And Sara, your skin is as glamorous as silk. Do you perform any kind of special skin care? Oh no, 
I just use shea butter. It's fairly high quality here in Tharbad. Hey man, it's not a trails game if you don't have a freaking bath scene, right? Oh wow, you got Judith Ranster's as well as Nina's? Thank you so much. I'll cherish them for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm glad you like them. Those two are probably the top two actresses right now. I bet you could sell them for a fortune. I'm not going to sell them. I'm cherishing them forever. <laughs> it's like a dream. To think my sister will be performing alongside stars like them. Oh, come now. It's not like that. It's just a minor role. I think it's plenty amazing. Wait, are you talking about Director Gotch's Foxy Parade? That's right. Director Gotch invited me to participate. He came by with a man in super nice clothing to ask. Sara will be the Foxy Parade's final piece. No doubt about it. It's like, they were so enthusiastic about it, my sister just had to cave. Oh, come on now, Shahina. You're embarrassing me. Kingdom Hearts 4 was confirmed? I think you mean Kingdom Hearts 40. Is this Foxy Parade one of the events during the schedule to take place during the film festival? Yeah, sounds like it'll be a big show during the opening. Sounds like a pretty incredible thing. Lots of famous actresses will be showing up. <laughs> it's not surprising that Sara got noticed. That director seems like a bit of a pervert, but he's got an eye for talent, and his passion's the real deal. I think he'll be more than fine. Good luck. Uh, right. Oh my, are you blushing a bit, Sara? Not a chance. Misara, Shahina. 440, it's all the fucking same. I know, right? I finally found you guys. Where'd you go? Oh, we were just at the Hammam until a little while ago. And, wait a second, you should be calling me Miss Shahina, too. <laughs> nope, it's just Shahina to you. You know this guy? He's a boy from our neighborhood, Tamar. What's got you out at a time like this? Well, I was asked to give you this earlier, Sara. A letter? Thanks, I wonder who it's from, though. What? is this? Sara? What's the matter, sis? Wait, what the? Call off your attendance in the parade, or you'll bring about catastrophe. Hey now, what the hell? Hmm. So even Sara received one of those threat letters. The boy said he was given a letter from a member of a shipping company of Middle Eastern origin. A guy probably isn't the culprit. Just like the case with the actresses, the letters appear to come through all sorts of different sources in order to make the sender more difficult to track. It's going to be difficult to follow that path at all. Tch, it's plain dirty they are. I hope Sara's alright. Um... Perhaps you might want to consult with the guild on this one. Yes, given that the issue concerns a member of the general public, I believe that they would treat it as a top priority. They may not charge very much for the services either. Well... Hmm. They're right, sis. This feels really bad. I mean, maybe it would really be better if you declined to invitation to take part in the parade at all. No, I can't do that. The planning for the parade's already in its final stages, and I already accepted the invitation. If I decide to back out now, it won't just be causing trouble for the director, it'll be for the entire film festival. And if I go to the guild with this, it may cause just as much trouble, right? Yeah, in the worst case, the entire parade might end up getting cancelled. But, but sis! Van, I've realized this is a huge favor to ask, but... Is there any way I could put in a request to you guys at the Solutions office? Of course, I can pay the fee. Well, we accepted her request at a reduced price as an extension of the actress's request. That woman seemed to be hiding something, though. You sure this is okay? What? Yes, I got that sense, too. 
but I'm sure she just has her own issues. Yeah, and we promised we'd help her out. Anyway, this is probably connected to a brand new clue. Just in case, should we confirm the specific ship shipping company that sent her the letter? Yeah, you might as well, just in case. Let's head to the Entertainment District, too. Our clients are waiting for their reports. We can include this in the discussion. Alright, so we can talk to them again. I spent all morning being chased around the city by you guys, then I had to go talk to everyone from the bazaar. It's been one heck of a day. I'm getting real sleepy. Now that I've introduced her to everyone at the bazaar, I'm going to take her for dinner. She's still not being completely honest, but I think she's managed to get her feelings across to everyone here. Some of them still have apprehensions, but I think that generally speaking, the merchants have accepted her. What happens next will depend on how hard she's willing to work, I suppose. Now then, if I want her to give it all at work tomorrow, I suppose it's only fair I treat her to something tasty tonight. It's still lively, but in a completely different way from this morning. It's kind of like the nightlife in Langport. Troubles at the bazaar seem to be solved for now, but I'm wondering where it might crop up next. There seems to be more and more tourists like the ones that harassed the dancer girls earlier today coming by. I think it'd be best to focus on the entertainment district tomorrow. There'll probably be more people from outside the city coming through there, I imagine. We've been conducting searches of the new visitors from the Middle East for the time being. However, we haven't found anyone or anything suspicious coming in from El Saim. The number of tourists arriving tomorrow will increase greatly, so we'll need to gather information with maximum efficiency. We can't just rely on the support from the capital to do everything for us. Taco man, taco man, does whatever a taco man can. Casinos and nightclubs. I see. So these are the sorts of places where you may learn from physical experience, yes, Master Van? Van? It's just intel gathering. Besides, the club is a no-go for miners. Got it, on yes, Fairy? Mm. Come on, Grandpa. Let the kids have some fun, too. <laughs> Truly, there are two types of Kingdom Hearts fans. There are people who hate Kingdom Hearts, and then people who hate Kingdom Hearts ironically. <laughs> those who care about the Disney and those who don't? Yeah, pretty much. Kingdom Hearts was the worst thing ever made. No. That's that's not true. <laughs> I've prepared for the festival as much as I can right now, so I'm taking some time to enjoy myself. You see that dealer over there? When I first saw him, I thought he'd been in a movie or something. He's a real interesting fellow. He seems to really have a grasp on things, even stuff you wouldn't expect. Maybe I can learn a lesson from him and think of something new to include in the parade. Seriously, this dude is hella sauce. Anyway. Ha ha ha! Man is a creature that constantly craves stimulation. That's what I think. The two things that most quickly fill that desire are sex and violence. However, I have to admit that gambling comes close. Hmm, 
you know, I've had the pleasure of chatting with that famous director over there, Mr. Gotch. His views on what make entertainment stimulating are truly fascinating. I must agree with his belief that unexpected surprises are the spice of life. <laughs> I quite wish to see what sorts of surprises may be in store for that foxy parade of his. In my time as a dealer, I've learned that people are quite easily worked up by unexpected stimuli. Should I be able to aid that director in creating something so surprising, I would be beyond honored. Alrighty then. Let's go check on Luch and his strip club. <laughs> Unvoiced act voice to try to walk in the club. Oh, are we heading in? Give it up, Aaron. This isn't the sort of place we can take the girls to. Guess I gotta surrender. For now. <laughs> they almost make it seem like we're gonna go there eventually, so, you know. I'm sure we're gonna go there. Eventually. Uh, I actually want to go this way. Oh, this officer's uh, stationed here now. Didn't have anything interesting to say, but yeah, now. That's just too mean, Dingo. I just saw you today in the capital, and you went all the way to Tharbad by yourself? Like I said, there's no reason for you to come to Tharbad too. I don't think you have as much freedom as a member of Tyrell as I do, right? Heh, <laughs> that's where you're wrong. I was actually given permission by the editor-in-chief to cover the film festival. Sounds like there's a new case regarding the person who's supposed to be leading the festival too. What is with your crazy luck? Oh, I see. So that's why you came here two days early. Oh, it's the Spriggan. And the whole gang, too. While it is true that I came from my own private investigation, I still haven't achieved any good results. It appears your team's grown again. And the new member is no ordinary woman. I am Rosette Twining, SC from the Marduk Company. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, you're from the Marduk? D dingo I'm not done here! What the heck is this private investigation you're on? <laughs> She's cute. Can we date her? I don't think there are dating events in this game. I mean, we can we can do a bonding event with her next chapter, I'm sure. <laughs> Let me help you out, Dingo! I keep telling you your help's unnecessary. But why? I've grown since last time. This isn't something I can rely on an outsider for. That doesn't matter right now! You've helped me out in the past, haven't you? If he's being so secretive about it, maybe his private investigation is to check out some salacious stores. What? Is that true? What exactly would make a store salacious? Aaron, come on. I can't believe you're doing something like that, Dingo. I have to teach you a lesson after all. Well, sounds like this lover's quarrel isn't ending anytime soon, so we'll take our leave now. Yeah, this might take a while. Our man just wants to escape, huh? Stop making things worse for me. Well, whatever. If anything happens, I'll give you a call. Good luck with your reporting, you two. Okay, so... Basically, Mariel has a massive crush on Dingo. And Dingo, despite appearances, actually does care for Mariel very much. And he doesn't want to get her involved in the shady shit that he deals with all the time. So he's like, no, stay at home. Don't bother with me. I'm I'm too edgy for this shit. Leave me alone. The Times said I could report on the film festival and let me come here just like that. There's no way you're just investigating some vulgar show or something. There's got to be more to it. Can I please catch a break just once? Look, it'd leave a bad taste in my mouth if I let you get involved in something dangerous, okay? I'm just here to do my job. Why don't you avoid doing anything too crazy? Get a big scoop on some of the VIPs from El Syme. What? I thought this whole festival was just some cheap event. You're telling me people like that are going to be here? I'm sure this could turn to a really interesting st- Wait a second. You're not going to deceive me this time. I'm going to follow you to the ends of the earth, Dingo. 
On another note, this is two cities in a row we've run into each other, Spriggans. I'm surprised. This probably has something to do with what Dingo's investigating. Hey, I'm the one surprised here. Don't you think you're wasting your time running around all over the place? We're here on a business trip. Our request isn't exactly the same thing that Dingo's working on. We're exchanging information, but I don't think it's anything as crazy as you're imagining. It's not like I'm imagining anything that crazy to begin with. Either way, I'll find a path forward and uncover the truth with my own two hands, damn it! <laughs> Man, I'm not telling her exactly what I'm looking for, but I gotta admit, Mariel's got better intuition than you'd think looking at her. Either way, it looks like I'm not gonna get her to stop chasing me around tonight, so I guess I'll take her out drinking for now. I guess I'll take her out on a date because I don't. I can't get rid of her. Smooth, Dingo, smooth. Maybe already late today, but I'll be sure to go all out working tomorrow, Dingo. Even if you try to get a head start on me, I'll give my all as a reporter to follow right on your tail. Yeah. Anyway, we can talk to Gaspar here. <laughs> you know, the handyman that Nia hired. Ridiculous, sniffing around like dogs. I imagine Nina's asked you to look into all, all sorts of things. No need for you to worry. I don't plan to get in the way of your big event. But you know, I'm sure it's been a long night, and you're still working? We can lend you a hand too, depending on the price and the work. <laughs> it's not the sort of thing an amateur like yourself could handle. Just go do what you've been asked without getting in my way. Of course, I'm busy enough trying to rein in that damned gotch who is going in at his own pace. I don't have time to waste sticking my neck into the business of why those actresses hired some damn fixes. <laughs> the way you make it sound, you'd love to stick your neck where it doesn't belong, given you have the time. How rude! I simply mean to say that anything could cause my company's performers to be involved in a scandal will be a massive pain in the ass in the long run. I try to keep tabs on those girls to the extent that my office allows me. Setting that all aside, was there something in particular you needed from me? If not, stay out of my business and I'll stay out of yours. I'm a busy man. Works well enough for me. I'll just say that I don't think I'd hurt, it hurt to keep the fact that my office is going to be working here in Tharbad for the next few days in mind. Now where in Zamuria did Dr. Got Director Gosh run off to this time? Damn it. I thought I had already told him we needed to have an additional meeting tonight. <laughs> oh dear. Let's check in on the Bracer Guild, shall we? Listen, I'm telling you, can't you call over that green-haired Bracer? I think that person might know exactly where my missing wallet is. Oh, it seems like they're in the middle of receiving a request. They're getting requests at this hour? They really don't get time to sleep, do they? How about we check what's going on? I'm very sorry, but I need you to explain the details a bit further. Alright, so, I arrived in Tharbad by car earlier. Along the way, my tire popped. Before I knew it, a green-haired bracer came up and started lending me a hand to repair it. He was heading to Tharbad too, so I gave him a ride the rest of the way. But then when I go went to Tharbad and went out to buy some souvenirs, I noticed my wallet was gone. I see. So you're hoping the guild would search you have So you're hoping to have the guild help you search for the wallet then. Yeah, I think it might have been stolen by someone right around the time my tire burst. And there's a chance that he noticed someone. Is there no way we can call him here? I'm quite sorry, but it'd be very difficult to do at this moment. At the very least, we can say for certain he's not a member of the Tharbad branch of the guild. It seems likely that he's working on his own as a bracer. And we haven't heard any reports about this. So, the earliest we could work on this would be in the morning. Oh, I see. In that case, there's really nothing I can do. But if you come across any information on my wallet today, please let me know. I'll be waiting near the Oasis. Hmm. What a troublesome request. 
Seems like a lot of people rely on the guild, so it must get touchy around here. A missing wallet? I hope he finds it quickly. Hey, we're gathering information anyways. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to ask about it. Hi there. You guys must be pretty busy to get requests this late at night. Well, if it isn't the Solutions Office. You overheard all that, didn't you? Yes, we're sorry for eavesdropping. Although it sounds like that man lost his wallet? I feel as though we might figure something out if we knew more about that green-haired bracer. Then again, I suppose the issue would be finding out who that green-haired bracer even is. Yes, I believe he's someone working from the outside, but... Does he plan to report in tonight after his patrol? Or not until tomorrow morning? Right now, we can't verify anything about a green-haired bracer. Hmm, it seems like we shouldn't wait until tomorrow on this. It's not like we'll find the guy's wallet just by finding the bracer, though. But you seem a bit more interested than I would have thought. I mean, it's not directly related to us, but I pick up on sense sometimes. Sense? Oh, no, it's not something for you to worry about. Well, I know this is tough, but good luck. Van can smell trouble coming from a mile away. Literally. Van, what do we do next? Well, he said he had to go to the Oasis after this, right? Might not be a bad idea to go and chat with him about it. <laughs> well, do as you wish. Alright, so we received an optional side quest. And we pretty much have to do it right now, so... Let's go ahead and do it. Right meow. There's a new uh, green exclamation point there, so let's go and see what's up. Hey there, we're with the Arkwright Solutions Office. We happen to see you back at the guild. Do you have a second to talk with us? Yeah, I think I remember seeing you guys at the guild. You guys wouldn't happen to know where that bracer is with the green hair is, do you? No, actually, we've been asked to help look for this guy, too. You think you could provide us some more details about him? Anything that you might have noticed could help us out. For example, or is there anything specific about him that seems strange at all? I definitely want to help you find him, but... I'm really sorry. Other than being a man with green hair, I don't remember anything specific. Afterwards, maybe it was a bit strange, but the whole thing was overall uneventful. Hmm. Wait, now that I think about it, there was something right when we got out of the car. When we did, a policeman on patrol in the parking lot came over to us. I introduced myself. But for some reason, the bracer seemed to avoid looking straight at the cop. Avoiding direct eye contact? You must admit that is rather strange. Yeah, but there's the rumor that police and bracers aren't exactly on the best of terms. Because of that, I didn't think it was a big deal at the time. Wait, are the police and guild not friends with each other? Well, both parties share the goal of upholding public safety, but they can have some points of contention regarding how to actually do that. The police focus on following the letter of the law, and the bracers focus more on protecting the people. And sometimes those approaches can clash with one another. I see. I think I understand that. But so far, this story's painting a completely different picture, don't you think? Hmm? What do you mean? From here on, we'd like to take a shot on investigating for you, if you'd like. I understand that you're concerned, but I'd recommend taking a rest and getting back to things tomorrow. Yeah, you're probably right. That sounds good. As an aside, if we are talking about a stolen wallet, how do you intend to pay for your lodgings? Oh, the guild actually said they'd cover my lodgings and food for the night. I'll be fine, as long as I can find my wallet soon. I'm really anxious, but I believe that you guys or the guild can help me get it back. Understood. Then please take care of yourself in the meantime. Maybe. I'm sure he'd sit around until he got bored and then just return to wherever the bracer set him up at. Huh, <sighs> sent him off just like that, huh? And so, what should we do? Chances are this guy's parading around as a fake bracer. A fake bracer? 
I suppose there was an incident with a fake police officer this afternoon. You're right. There's a decent chance these things are related. This kind of scam is a very serious crime if he's pretending to be a bracer. Yeah, this is a side quest. Most tourists will be like that guy. They assume any bracer they meet is trustworthy and would never commit a crime and they let their guard down. But if he is in fact a fraud, he could do whatever he pleases with them. He might even tarnish the guild's reputation at this rate. At the moment, only one incident has been reported. So, if we're able to find him, there's a chance we can stop him before this gets any worse. Frankly speaking, I don't give one whit about the guild's reputation, but I think it might be worth sticking our necks into this, if only to get a better grasp on what exactly is going down in this city. First things first, we expose the real identity of this green-haired bracer. <laughs> Hope this isn't going to be a boring one. Agreed, Master Van. Naturally, I shall support this request as well. Okay, so what do we do from here? If we speak to others who've seen the Bracer, we could learn more about him. Yeah, it'll be necessary to learn his tendencies from here on. If he really is a fake Bracer, the last thing he'll want is to be near the guild in the traditional district. Eliminating that means the entertainment district is a good place to start asking around about him. That's right. Maybe a casino dealer would be a good good person to ask. They gotta keep close attention to their customers. <laughs> Alright gang, let's split up and look for clues. <laughs> it really does feel like that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you totally skipped the sub-events, wouldn't you? Other than that, I guess we can ask people hanging around the shops if they've happened to see him. Yep, those both sound like good ways to get some clues. So, let's get going, shall we? Chasing a... Bracer? Started. Alright then. Let's uh, start our investigation by talking to the most suspicious man in this entire, uh... Entire place. The creepy looking dealer. Ugh. <sighs> Just have to wait for him to pop in. You're looking for a green-haired bracer, huh? I hadn't seen him in Tharbad before, but he quite... So he rather stood out to me. You've never seen him before? Or, you, you really saw him here? That's right. About an hour ago when I saw him pass by here, apparently on patrol. I have to say, something seemed rather curious about him at the time. Almost as if he was surveying our guests, perhaps appraising them of something. I was wondering if he was here investigating some incident. I assume you're working on the same case? Yeah, something like that. Did the Bracer speak to anyone? Yes, I believe he spoke with one of the men who came here to play. But we also had a police officer patrolling the area. As soon as he noticed, he made himself scarce. Nah, <laughs> running from the cops! He acts all tough, but he's really just a chicken shit. And he was appraising the guests. That certainly piques my interest. I would say, and thinking back, it was quite strange to see. That's about everything I was able to gather from that bracer there. I'm not sure what it is you're all investigating, but I do pray you'll find what you're looking for. Stay safe out there. Yeah, thanks for the info. Let's talk to the others and see what we can find out. Very well. We're investigating a murder. No, we're not. Nah, man, we're just investigating some frauds. Ah, ooh, excuse me. This guy's a shop? Really? What do you got for sale, my dude? God, I have no currency.
Oh, if it isn't our buddy Nate. Inspector does Wani. What do you mean you're coming to Tharbat tomorrow, so I better get ready? The Metropolitan Police have been asked to come investigate. Uh, I understand that, but why am I getting pulled into the task of my off-duty? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, understood. No, 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 it's fine, fine. You don't have to go that far. Can I... Can I at least get some compensation for having work on my vacation? Uh, Inspector? Nate, does that mean... I'm so sorry, I'm getting dragged onto another case. Is this guy serious? No, 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 he can't be serious. Rip. rip a my dude. Hmm? You want to talk to me about a green-haired bracer? Oh, didn't you talk to a bracer with green hair today? Huh, really? I just figured it wouldn't hurt to ask, but you actually have information for me? Now listen here, I'm in the middle of a date! Go bother someone else, man! That's no way for a cop to talk to citizens. How about you share some information on the bracer and then we get out of your way? I already feel oh so terrible about interrupting your little discussion. You really piss me off, you know that? But I guess we're already talking. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Nate gets shit on a lot, but he only deserves like 80% of it. Alright, just a little while ago, I saw a bracer matching that description who came over to me. He said if there was anything that I needed to do, he could help me out. Oh, and what did you do after that? After we finished with the greetings, he just went off somewhere. Thinking about it now, it was a bit random for some bracer to approach me like that and just leave like it was nothing. Well, Nate, didn't you leave after what you said to him? You were like, I'm a policeman, so there's nothing for you to worry about. And then he just sort of left without saying much else. Well, yeah, actually, that's right, now that you mention it. If this was just an isolated case, nothing would seem off regarding it to me, but... The fact that he once more seemed wary of the police seems to indicate a certain pattern of his behavior. Agreed. A little more info and I think we'll have everything we need. Well, I'm sorry for interrupting your wonderful date. I hope you can enjoy the rest of the night. I don't need you telling me that! Seriously with this guy. I don't know what you guys are trying to find, but just stay out of the police's way! Well, that was rough, but we needed to confirm it with him. Let's head somewhere calmer and collect our thoughts. Is the area over there a suitable location? Perfect. We can review all the information we have and figure out what to do next. Avoiding the police and appraising customers at a casino. Instead of acting like a bracer, he seems more like a petty thief. That... Uh... Oh, I skipped a line, dammit. The green-haired bracer's behavior has been quite odd, don't you think? That is to say, if we assume that he is, in fact, not actually a bracer, his actions begin to make sense. So it really is the same as that fake policeman we encountered today. That's right. And just like that time, he's taking a pretty massive risk if his goal really is just to steal a couple of wallets. They've got to have their eyes on something bigger. Alright, so the text diverges here if we pick Chaos or Law in the other quest. Uh, because we picked Law, we get no additional text. What? Huh? Excuse me? Is this not translated at all? Oh, no, it's, it's like three lines, never mind. I was, I was unsure of how they did that. I'm sorry, there's an alignment system? Yeah, there's an alignment system in this game. Uh, between taking the lawful route, taking the chaotic route, or taking your route somewhere in between. Alright, so yeah, there's just a few extra lines because of the choice made, so it's very small, so... Uh... In any case, the issue is that the sightings for this guy only began tonight. Wandering around the city, looking for people to rob, doesn't seem like it's panning out for him. 
So with that in mind, stealing from drivers while riding in their car, given that it has already worked for him once, he may try it again. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let's make sure we stop him before anyone else gets swindled, or worse. On that note, there is one more thing to consider. If he is using cars with punctured tires to run his scam, what do you think of running an area-wide search of cars inbound to Tharbad? Oh, you can do something like that? Sounds like a dream come true. Yes, I can utilize some shards to conduct a quick data analysis in the area. Preparation will only take a few moments. Initializing search. Area search has been completed. Hmm. And the results are... Currently there is a stalled vehicle near the city entrance. Whoa, nice work! Already got us a car and he seems pretty likely to target. There's no time to waste then. Let's check the car and see if our bracer friend is up to no good. We'll be ready to surround him in the parking area. If he was already close by, it's possible that he could be arriving any minute. Understood. Alright then. Let's go catch us a criminal. This chick really is Nauto, isn't she? The second she joined the party, she took over the whole investigation. <laughs> it does kind of feel like that. Although, uh... I'm not sure her character archetype is quite, uh, quite Nauto. If anything, the Nauto is more of uh, Van's childhood friend, Rune. Uh, I haven't actually gotten to use her in combat yet. But, uh... Yeah, I, I can't really tell from this. But she is strong AF. After a few minutes of Van and the others staking out ahead of their target's arrival. Van has friends? I know, right? What kind of JRPG protagonist has friends? <sighs> Thanks to you, we managed to get the Tharbad safely. Thank you so much, Bracer. Oh, it's no need to thank me. It's no big deal, really. Although I recommend you have your car looked at later so you can get it properly repaired. <laughs> he even thinks ahead with good advice. We really appreciate what you did for us. Eh, your thanks is all I ask for. This kind of work is what I'm here for. So you say, but thanks isn't all you're taking, is it? W what? Target secured. Wh what are you doing? Our apologies for scaring you two. We're from the Arkride Solutions office. We've got our eye on our Bracer friend here as a suspect. What do you mean this Bracer's a suspect? Stop! That's that's my... Just as I thought, here's a wallet. This wouldn't happen to be one of yours. Fairy handed over the wallet to the tourists. Wait a second. This is my wallet! It should have been in my bag in the back seat. So this... Bracer actually... That's right. Actually, how should I put this? Guess I'll do them a solid and not slander their name. This guy's a fake. He's got no association with the guild. When you were on your way to the city, did you happen to get a flat tire? Yeah, I thought that since we've been driving for a while that it had worn down. Right around that time, this Bracer came up to help us. Unfortunately, it seems likely that this man actually was the one who caused your car troubles. He ruptured your tire and pretended to bring you luck by giving you free repairs. Then he caught a ride with you so he could steal your belongings. Am I correct? Please, correct me wherever I may be wrong. Shh. I can't believe it. He really conned us into believing he was an actual bracer. I was completely oblivious. I'm not sure what would have happened without you guys on you jerks for being so gullible. The second I said I was with the guild, you just played with me. Maybe I started messing around so much because of how easy this whole gig was, but... Well, who gives a shit? Even if you catch me, 
We won't get in the way of our real goal. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> Who's to say? Wherever you put me, I've got people who will pay my bail. Take me to the police or the guild. It really doesn't matter. Oh, you think you're a real badass, huh? How about we drag you along the parking lot instead? You wouldn't dare! Yes, they do. They have emblems that they need to show to everyone. Well, Estelle needs to. <laughs> Calm down. There's no point going out of our way and beating them up. Hey, I'm all for the guild owing me more. Let's bring them to them. In that case, I can contact the guild and inform them what has transpired. Nevertheless, I can say that this experience has been rather refreshing. It's been quite an honor to see your good work for myself, Mr. Spriggan. Hey, there's no reason to butter me up. Just give the guild a call already. <laughs> Absolutely. Afterwards, the bracers quickly arrived and apprehended the green-haired bracer. The two tourists gave their own testimonies both to the guild and to the local police. Afterwards, Van and his helpers paid the guild a visit to give their own reports. Um... She's Van's minder. She found out that his heart's been spiking during weird instances, aka all the weird shit we've been getting into. So she's like, okay, there's clearly a problem here. I'm gonna have to deal with this myself. And she just pops in and saves her asses. <laughs> she's our doctor? Kinda, sorta? She's not really a doctor, though. She's a, a service concierge, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> So that bracer really wasn't a bracer at all. Had he not been stopped so quickly, this could have tarnished the guild's credibility. My sincerest thank you on behalf of the guild for catching him. Look, I'm not here for your thanks. I'm just doing what I feel like. That sounds made up as fuck. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Though, perhaps you guys think my good deeds would warrant some payment, yeah? Indeed. We formally intend to thank you for this matter, and that includes monetary payment. We caught the Bracer, but I was rather surprised by his true identity. So, apparently he's one of the Devonchi brothers? A criminal group from the capital? Heh, <laughs> so I guess that police officer we met earlier today is one too. We don't know for certain, but if he is, it's rather likely that he'll re-offend. We should remain vigilant in the future. Either way, I see this as proof that we need stronger security presence for the film festival. I'm glad we'll be working together now, tomorrow, to ensure things go well. Thanks again for all your help, Spriggans. Chasing a Bracer complete. 3500 Mira get. And I got Grey and Chaos points for doing this one. Alright, that, is that it for side quests? I think so. At least for today. This will probably be the last major scene we've seen today, so we'll find out how long this is. Hopefully it won't be too, too bad. But we gotta leg it. You stop when I say stop. <laughs> I wish. Unless you want to hear what people stomping around sounds like through a microphone. <laughs> Alright, so Nina's room is... Oh, if it isn't Mr. Arkride and Company. 
Mr. Ranster and uh, Miss Ranster and Miss Fenley are over in the pool area. It appears that they're already talking to the manager, so feel free to enter. Got it. Thanks. Aside from the fact that that guy keeps shouting to us, service here is pretty good. I would expect as much from a six-star hotel. Wait, so they're playing in the pool at this time of night? It's pretty common to hang out by the pool and get a drink at night. You're a bit too young to understand how adults play, little one. Mm, that's not true. I've tried liquor on the battlefield. Fairy, don't even think about it. And Aaron, can't you control yourself for once? Yeah, alright. <laughs> it appears Anyez has things under control with them. I guess so. She's definitely been more forceful with them. Alright then, let's go play in the pool. Wait, if we're going to the pool... Do, 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 do. We need, we need to we need to get ready for the oh I don't I don't have swimsuits for everyone right no I don't I don't have swimsuits for everyone so uh Van Anyez and uh, Rosette will be ready to swim Aaron will not be. Okay, let's go. Entering the pool area will advance the main story, so take care. I didn't buy all the DLC. Just the stuff that you get for uh, ordering the game, uh, pre-ordering it. Wow, so this is the pool at night. There's a lovely view of the oasis, and it's so calm, too. Yeah, I'm sure if you got a bunch of young adults here and started partying, you get pretty noisy. That's not what we're here for. Come on, let's find our clients. Oh, it's Van. Hello there, dear. Good evening. You finish up your work for the day? Yeah, more or less. It seems like you're still on duty, though. That's right. I was called in to help before the big festival. Oh my. Who is this enchanting young lady? My name is Rosette Twining. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Bramati. Oh. Perhaps you're with that company that Van is contracted with. Well, a lot's happened. Have you seen the two actresses by any chance? Oh, those two. They should be right over there. Oh hell yeah! We get to see two top movie stars in swimsuits? Oh, hello everyone. Apologies for meeting you in this state. Now, I almost want to yell at you for getting to laze around like this while we're running around all over doing your dirty work, but... Yeah, I guess the eye candy sort of makes up for it. It's not like we're dressed up like this for you guys. You know we've been meetings with higher-ups all day long, don't you? <laughs> Forget I said any of that, then. It does seem like that would wear you out pretty quickly, though. <laughs> Yeah, Van actually has a little bit of game. Not that he uses it for anything, but... <laughs> I guess we all have it hard, then. <laughs> yes, it sounds like you guys do, too. Wait, there's another girl with you? I trust your Miss Judith Ranster and Miss Nina Fenley. I'm pleased to meet you. My name is Rosette Twining, temporary staff of the Solutions Office. Um, it's nice to meet you too? 
I don't understand what's going on with her, but care to give us your report for the day? Yeah, so let me summarize everything that happened. So there's a dangerous monster in the underground waterway? And another new threat letter? D Judith. <clears throat> it's fine, Nina. These developments are making everything interesting. You uncovered all that in just one day. It seems the situation is even more complicated than I thought. So there might be a connection to the cancelled film festival in Messeldom, too. Yes, though that is merely a theory at present. We don't know how everything is connected just yet, but it's clear something big is going on here. A particular concern is the girl who showed up in the underground waterway. Naturally, we can't deduce whether she's also the one who sent the threat letters. But it's not something we can overlook either. Considering my situation as well. Right. Especially if it concerns A. Hmm? But in the end, you don't have anything concrete, do we? Wow, you Spriggans are so impressive. Hey, I admit, we've got a lot of ground to cover. No, but this is still far more than we were hoping for in just a single day. If we hadn't submitted this request at all, we would have gone to the film festival with no preparations or understanding at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand that. All I want to say is that we really need this wrapped up as fast as we can. I mean, one of the most recently scouted girls just received a new threat letter. Hmm? Yeah, well, I guess that's true. We can't let this go unanswered. Hmm. So, what exactly is the culprit's goal in all this? Huh? It's true. We really can't determine a motive at all. I mean, if they just want to stop the film festival, it'd be faster to just make it another terror threat. Instead, they're sending threat letters to actresses and dancers. It seems like an awfully roundabout way of doing it. Oh. You're right. I see. It's as if their motives and methods don't align somehow. Either way, it is still an act of sabotage before the festival. Yeah, but there's something about that inconsistency that might be the key to this whole thing. <laughs> oh, good luck with that, man. Best of luck with your speedrun. <laughs> Seems like you're having quite an interesting discussion here. And who are you? It, your Majesty? I didn't know you were here. Our apologies for our attire. No, not at all. Pay it no mind. You are, after all, the two most beautiful flowers in the world of cinema. Perhaps one might even call you treasures of Zamuria. Now, please feel free to spread that beauty as much as you can, and bathe this dry place in your glory. <laughs> Uh, you're the same as ever, I see. Huh? Could this be... Hmm... Your Majesty, that's enough playing around for now. I understand, Naja. My name is Sharid Azval, first child of Grand Prince Saruman of El Saim. And this is my secretary, Naja. I did hear about you from Judith. It sounds like you're at the Arkride Solutions office then. I would actually like to ask you for some advice myself, if that would be agreeable. Oh. Huh. I see. Oh, so the prince has a threat letter too? Well, ships.
Allow me to say that it's an honor to have an audience with you, Your Majesty. I'm just a handyman from the Republic. I wouldn't have thought it possible to be personally requested by someone like you. Oh, come now. Your reputation precedes you. Now I figured it wouldn't hurt to reach out. Ah, and it seems your staff is as I expected them to be. Including your temporary new member. I am honored. Huh? So, what would the successor to the Grand Prince of a whole country be doing in a place like this, though? I heard that you were acting as a sponsor for the film festival. I never expected someone in your capacity would also receive a threat letter. There's no doubt about it. It's the same as the ones we've received, word for word. It arrived about five days ago, around the same time we got ours. It came directly to the royal suite His Highness was staying in. That means the letters were delivered simultaneously to the capital and Tharbad. We did conduct our own investigation right away, but even now we've been unable to track the route the letter came by. They appear to use a very clever method to disguise their tracks. Sounds like the same as Sara's case. What? Uh... Did it... Did I lose a line somewhere? Yeah, I, I, I must have. Okay, I, I don't understand where where things went wrong here. Uh, whatever. Um, hopefully the scene makes sense in some point. Because, uh, the lines here say Judas should be talking. But this is Prince Shreed, obviously. Um, they're talking about the dancer I recommended to the director. She just got a letter this evening. And given that we just scouted her this afternoon, it's far too fast. Really makes it hard to believe that this is just some kind of elaborate prank. Maybe this was just, like, mistitled. Yeah, this was def- okay, I understand what happened here. Uh, yeah, these- these lines should be from Shuri, not Judith. Cool, that's, uh, something for- that's something to fix. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think we can cross the idea of this being a prank, based on the fact that His Majesty received a letter as well. You'd have to be either seriously brave or seriously stupid. But you seem quite calm despite having received something like that, no? You letting yourself get close to people like us, too. You really trust that girl beside you to keep you safe, huh? Hmm, it's only natural. Naja is my secretary, but she also serves as my bodyguard. Her skills with the sword are regarded as the best or second best in the Principality. I imagine she could take Mr. Arkride or the service concierge over there in a fight. Uh oh. <laughs> I imagine I could scarcely hold a candle to her. Hmm. Well, I don't think I really stand to be compared to the escort of a royal prince. Oh, right. I'm fine if we dispense with the formalities as we talk. Hmm. Very well, then. Very well, then, Van. I hear you're 24 years old. You're three years older than I. And as Director Gotch told me, you have quite the keen eye. He informed me that you offered an excellent analysis of Golden Blood's deeper themes. I assume you've seen the R17 Limited version as well. I'm sure it was a must-watch. I was actually intending to watch exactly that when I went. Unfortunately, I was with my assistants at the time, even though the normal version was a nice change of pace. 
Oh, you understand. You get it, Van. One time, I went with my sister to see the so-called complete edition. I still remember her icy stares to that day. Heh, <laughs> what a disaster that'd be. They're really getting into it. Come on now, Van. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised they get along. He even knew Van's age. <laughs> Seems like a more straightforward guy than you'd think. Prince is a pretty interesting dude. It must be hard on you, huh? Not at all. I'm used to it at this point. Oh! Judith Ranster and Nina Fenley! Wow, you can even see movie stars in swimsuits here. I should come to Aljamira more often. Could I get an autograph? Actually, how would you ladies like to hang out with us for a bit? Wait... It's these guys again. Don't tell me they're staying here. Those guys are definitely not refined enough to stay at a place like this. Wait, you're those guys from this afternoon! Why are you here? Oh, are they friends of yours? We ran into them earlier today. Sorry, we'll shut them up. Bullshit! This is a rare opportunity though, isn't it? You lot, go get those men! Holy shit! <laughs> he fucking pants them! Wh what? What? Oh. So fast. Oh my! What young, soft skin! Bramati, please. I see that you guys are brave enough to challenge the Crown Prince of El Saim. But since we're having such a lovely night, you really should behave while enjoying yourself so as not to spoil it. Or perhaps you'd like to play with me instead. Oh, we're leaving! Bye! Bermati, what the hell, man? <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about that joke, honestly, but at least props to you, Bramati, for understanding tropes to using them effectively. <laughs> that was a pretty impressive move. I expect nothing less from the right hand of the prince. Oh, no, that was merely child's play. <laughs> Naja, there's no need to be modest. Hmm... She might be faster than Elaine or Sylphide. There's lots of strong people in the world, huh? <laughs> well, we've talked for quite some time. Perhaps we should leave it here for the evening. It may be modest, but I do intend to pay the same fee that these ladies are paying. And of course, it's no problem at all if you prioritize the ladies here. Send me any updates you can. Please do send me any updates as you can. I thank you for meeting with me this evening. And I expect quite a bit from you. Particularly your temporary staff member there. Oh. What does he know about, uh, Rosette? After that, the actresses went back up to their rooms, and the team's activities for the first day concluded. Van and the others returned to the inn. After a day full of long-distance travel and many other activities, they were all exhausted. In order to be at their peak when investigating the case surrounding the film festival the next day, they decide to get to bed early. Hmm? Nah man, the night starts now. Now that the little girls are in bed, it's time for some drinking and some more... adult fun. You want to go to the nightclubs and casinos, don't you? You really are full of energy, huh? 
Well, I guess you can do whatever you want. But I don't know what kind of craziness you'll cause, so I'm coming along as a guardian. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. No need to make up some dumb excuse, though. Shut it. I have to save face, after all. What time do you think you two will be home? <laughs> Whoa, what the hell did you... We'll make sure we're back before morning. Can you make sure the girls don't worry? Leave that to me. Please have a good night. Okay, so apparently the night events are not over, so maybe I'll keep going. Really, though, what's with that maid, anyway? Even the prince dude seemed really interested in her. You noticed, huh? Let's just say that her primary employer's got a pretty deep background. Huh? And you really seem to trust her, despite only knowing her through such a dubious contract? You sure this is the first time you met her? I guess anyone would have a certain level of trust after working with someone for three years, even if we've only ever talked remotely. Alright, let's poke around a bit and then head home. I really don't want to worry the girls. You're like a dad worrying about his teen daughter, huh? I'm not that old, damn it! Ah, right. I better prepare this now. Huh? Well, whatever. Let's get going. Oh, we're being tailed. Now I'm getting fired up. Yeah, I don't think I could just save. I, I don't think I could just stop here. That'd be crazy. Who would do that? Not me. But uh, I'm putting everyone's normal outfits back on because, uh, yeah, as cool as the swimsuits are. This is not nightclub music. This is fucking like 20s ragtime. Oh. They actually have a legit one of these in there, don't they? I, uh, didn't actually expect they would do this. But hey, I guess they had to earn their, uh, Cero 17 rating. Alright, this is what I'm talking about. Now I just need to find an open table. I'll take a Tharbad Knight. What are you gonna get? One Alexander. Extra nutmeg. Right away. <sighs> Never change, do ya? I heard it comes with authentic nutmeg. Pretty good, you know. Yeah, that almost certainly looks like that one girl. What? Wait. What? <laughs> Got some pretty good ones here. Wouldn't you say? Wait, aren't you two? Don't worry about him. He's a bit drunk. But this is nice from time to time, isn't it? Oh hey, so it's Ouroboros. Yeah. I haven't been to Tharbad in a while. But they've got quite the nice scene going on here. I'm planning to really live it up while I'm here. 
<laughs> you have your cash ready, right? I do wonder what young girls of this day and age prefer. Thank you, thank you! What a wonderful dance that was! Now coming up next is the moment you've all been waiting for! Hey. Hey, look! What is it, Air? Huh? Alright, please give it up for tonight's main attraction! The Night Butterfly of Tharbad, recruited for the Foxy Parade at the Film Festival. Presenting Sara! After making her debut at the festival, she might not have much chance to visit us here anymore. Rumor has it, it is impossible to take her home, and this might be your last chance, so why not give it a shot? Alright then, start the music! I'm going to get banned from Twitch for this. I'm definitely going to get banned from Twitch for this. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Twelve thirty AM. You must be doing this to pay back some kind of debt, right? Yes. We aren't originally from Calvard, after all. We came from a town in the Middle East. Back then, when my sister was still young, my parents borrowed money from some nasty people to make ends meet. After our parents died, we tried to flee here. But in the end, they caught up to you and demanded you pay the debt. And I'm assuming that even if you pool what you earn during the day, it's not enough. So you figured that you had no choice, even if you didn't want to turn to something like this. <laughs> it's a pretty embarrassing story to hear out loud. Really? I don't think it's all that embarrassing. At least you're not selling your body, so something like this isn't really a big deal. Oh. When I first started, I had no choice but to use that method to get money. I also heard there was a system in the Republic that allows children to waive their parents' debts. But both of those methods felt like I was betraying my parents and cutting them off somehow. After all, you inherited their dancing style, so you chose to also return their debts. Well, as long as you can return the money, they shouldn't have any complaints. I can see why you avoided going to the guild then. Yes. I respect them a lot, but I'm sure they'd advise me to give this up, and to take the easy way out. Pretty silly the way I'm so stubborn about it, huh? Well, I'll admit it's a clumsy way to handle it, yeah. Have you even told your sister about this? About the dancing, or the dead at all? It's really difficult to confess to her after all this time. Plus, now I finally have some hope of paying it all off. Once I get the payment for the performance at the Foxy Parade? Huh. I see now. Seriously, everyone always just loves making things harder on themselves. It's so much better just to live comfortably. Hey, I'd say you're not too different yourself. It's not easy to break something like this off, especially once your heart is set. Knowing your sister, I'm sure she'll be fine either way. Aw oh, shit, he's just going for the full head pads today. She might get angry that you kept it a secret, but I'm sure that's just to show another part of her love for you. Oh. Just leave the matter of the threat letters to us and focus on getting prepared for the parade. Your dance was, well, really damn good. But somehow I felt like it went beyond that. Like there was a real art to it. Come to think of it, I think we can count that dance there as your request fee. Don't worry about paying me another Mira. Van? Alright, I'll do my best. Please look forward to the show. 
Is this dude serious? You guys! Hello. Huh? What? what Who the hell is this bitch? All right, I think I've read about her in the tabloids. I misjudged you, Spriggan. I can't believe you drag a girl like this out in the middle of the night and, and even end up making her cry. It's like I thought. You really are a bad guy, aren't you? You saw that, huh? I figured you'd be pretty busy right about now. But you should get to bed. You don't want to risk screwing up your good looks now. Who the hell do you think I am? Some middle-aged woman obsessed with skincare? I didn't even say anything like that. That's not what happened, though. You don't need to say another word. In the name of the goddess, I'll send you straight to Gehenna for this. Wait, this is the phantom thief that made all the ruckus in the capital? But... Worry about that later. Here she comes. Oh, I wasn't expecting a boss fight. Alright, um... Okay, is that, if this is actually centered, then that's fine. It is. Perfect. I got her. Good. Oh, I guess I only had to take her down to half health. Well, that was easy. <sighs> You're stronger than you look. All right, can you just settle down already? No, I can't let this go. Looking back, I was a fool. I know you came here to deceive Nina. Excuse me a minute. Move it! I'm trying to deliver divine punishment here! You're wrong! Van and Aaron were just helping me out. And well, I was just moved after everything they said to me. You don't have to force it. I'm sure things are too hard for you now. Uh, what? <laughs> for real? Mm-hmm. Um. We'll leave the we'll leave it here for tonight. Just be warned. Next time you make a girl cry, you won't get off easy. See ya. Bye, Judith. What was that exactly? Not totally sure. She's some cosplayer who dresses up as a phantom thief. She made some commotion back at the capital. But, uh, hey. Yeah, I saw it. I'm sure she's got some kind of reason. Seems like a pain to dig too much into it, though. Wow, what the hell, man?
Hmm. Well, are you interested? Yes. It's more or less what I expected. Seems they enjoyed our unexpected guest as well. Now then, it is time for us to stir things up with our golden capriccio of fear. Understood, boss. Okay, so the boss actually shows up for once, and also Ouroboros' uh, third Anguis and the Golden Butterfly. I mean, we're just, we're just throwing everybody out here this chapter. This chapter is crazy. <laughs> Maybe I should have saved this event for next time. Now I almost definitely would have got banned if that happened. <laughs> oh my god. October 6th. For real this time. 8.05 a.m. Staring intensifies. Come on, girls, it's gonna get cold if you don't eat. Man, this hummus is just incredible. I'm not mad. Must have been nice having some fun last night. Just one thing, though. That isn't how a guardian should be acting. Uh, <laughs> I knew they'd find us out. My apologies, and I even went along with it. Look, it's not your fault. I never expected the Genesis to light up while we were out. And based on the timing, it sounds like it happened exactly when we were dealing with that self-proclaimed phantom thief. Yes, though it could very well be a coincidence. It did make me worry that something might have happened to you guys, though. Sorry about that. You're exactly right. This time, though, there was no sign of Mare so it doesn't seem to have been the exact same sort of thing. Hmm, so there are a variety of patterns to how it might react? Still, can't believe it's actually her. Have you noticed too, Munchkin? Hmm? Well, yeah, her movements were the same as they were in the movie. Oh? As in what movie? Either way, just give us a pass this once, alright? Fan, everyone, good morning. Oh, good morning. You guys are already out this morning? Yes, I'm on my way to Vegas Films for a meeting now. I need to get things taken care of quickly before tomorrow. And I'm coming along as her manager to check things out. There's even a chance I might meet Judith and Nina myself. Ah, so that's what you're after. Like I said before, don't blame me if you get in trouble for coming along. He'll be fine. I might even get a chance to meet the director. Miss Shahina, you have the talent to become our next budding star. <gasps> what would I do if he actually said that? <laughs> well, you certainly seem energetic today, Shahina. Well, honestly, I don't think that's that much of a stretch. Well, do whatever you want. Though I think this would be pretty different from your normal dancing. Then again, it might open up some big doors for you, too. Right, I'll do my best. Hmm? Hmm, <laughs> hmm, Feels pretty different among you guys today, honestly. <gasps> Don't tell me the man my sister's been meeting at night is actually... Uh, Shahina, wait! No, come on, of course not. Seriously, we just got here yesterday. Oh, right, I guess that's true. I'm sorry again for my sister's rudeness. Best of luck with your work today, everyone. We're all rooting for you to finish up the request. Hmm? I don't know, you're pretty suspicious. <laughs> Wait, don't tell me the Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, whatever, let's just get going. What, do you guys actually believe her? I explained everything that happened last night, didn't I? Yeah, well, that's true, but... <laughs> You're quite the mendacious fellow, Van. Man delicious? <laughs> not something little kids like you need to worry about. For the last time, I'm not a little kid. All right, all right. Let's not keep messing around in the middle of the street. Well, anyway, 
we need to look into that threat letter for today. And not just for Nina and Judith, for Shahina and Sara too. That's right. The festival is for tomorrow, so I assume today will be the first critical point. Based on the fact that we're on the case, something ought to be put in motion today. Let's get started by looking around and doing our springing requests, and keep your eyes peeled so we don't miss anything. Right. Got it. I'll be here supporting you today. Alright, that's... that's it for today. I hope you all had fun with this episode. I hope I don't get banned from Twitch or YouTube for porting the videos. We'll find out what happens. Anyway, if you don't hear from me, I've been banned. If you do hear from me, uh, we'll be streaming in two nights' times. I don't think I'll be doing it uh, tomorrow night, or tonight tonight, because uh, vocal rest. Stream like 15 hours, three days, so I mean, that's wh whatever. I'm. Uh, point being, see y'all next time, uh, and have a good night.